your local Petro-Canada dealers and agents. Putting Canada first. Now for all the action, let's join our CDC sports crew. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Welcome to the CFL on CBC. Tonight, Montreal at Calgary. We'll join Steve Armitage and Ron Lancaster in just a minute. But first of all, let's bring you up to date. Here's George McLean and the news. And let's have a look at the conference standings. We begin with the East. Montreal with a win tonight. They can move within three points of Toronto. Toronto is home to Winnipeg tomorrow afternoon. As we switch, have a look at the West. BC beat Edmonton last night. A break for Calgary. The Stampeders can move into a tie with the Eskimos tonight. It is my pleasure to welcome Steve Armitage to our broadcast crew. Right now, let's bring in Steve and Ronnie Lancaster from McMahon Stadium. Thank you, Brian. I'm looking forward to this game because Ronnie Lancaster, I think it's an important game for both clubs, and both clubs are now in control of their own destiny playoff wise. Exactly right, Steve. That's all you can really ask. With the loss of the Eskimos last night, Calgary can tie them. Montreal with a game in hand over both Ottawa and Hamilton. It's in their hands. It's up to them. We'll see what they do with it. Okay, it should be a good one. We'll be right back with the opening kickoff from McMahon Stadium in Calgary. The Stampeders against the Concord right after this lesson. Weather-wise, you couldn't ask for a better night for a football game here at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Temperature 11 degrees Celsius, and for a change, not much wind to speak of. The Calgary Stampeders will be kicking off to the Montreal Concord, J.T. Hay. Number two will do the honors for the Stampeders. Vince Faison and Lyman deep to receive. Faison watches it bounce and go through the end zone. That's an excellent kickoff. I think any time a kicker is kicking off, he aims for the goalpost because it makes it difficult for the receiver to catch. But there'll be no point. They'll get it out to the 25, ready to go. Okay, let's have a look at the starting lineup for the Montreal Concord. Turner Gill will start at quarterback, the second leading rusher in the CFL. Wilson will be one of the running backs along with Lyman. Brown, Bailey, Araki, and Washburn are the receivers. Fairbanks. And Miles Gorell, former Stan Peters, on the offensive line for the Concord. First and 10, and no scrimmage from the 25. Turner Gill, the quarterback. He's got some running room, and he gets across the 35 yard line into the 36 yard line. James West, number 58, of the Stan Peters, there to make the tackle. That's not a bad way to start a football game. Every team looks for a surprise play, a reverse, a deep pass, something like that. This time they brought Bailey back and faked the reverse to him. And as Joe Glass said today, he wanted Turner Gill to run, so he didn't waste any time. Got him going right now. First play. Joe Glass says that if Turner Gill picked up 65 yards rushing, he should have a good all-round game. First down, Concord. The gift to Wilson. And Wilson gets across the 40-yard line into the 41. Lyle Wozniczewski there to make the stop for the Stampeders. Looking at the way Calgary will line up defensively, Wozniczewski, who has the leading number of sacks for the Stampeders with 15 and a half. Carpenter, West, and Morrison are the linebackers. Jenkins, Moyer, Hall, Odoms, Hogue, and the defensive backfield for the Stampeders. Second and five, Concord. Turner Gill over the middle, complete to number 29, Todd Brown. Well, Galat's really high on Brown this time. Instead of putting him out wide and keeping him there, they bring him into the middle. But watch Gill throw the football. Gets it lined up. It's a nice catch. Throws it away from the defender. First down. This is the key to the Montreal football team to get that offense moving. Well, they proved they could uh, work the offense against the D.C. Lions with a victory at the Olympic Stadium and then a tie against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. First and ten, Concord. They give to Wilson on the draw. And Wilson gets across the 56 into the 57-yard line. James West played that the way a middle linebacker should play it. He should never drop out of that position until the quarterback passes up that remaining back. And he waited, and when Wilson got the ball, he started forward. And that's why he was able to meet him on the line of scrimmage. Concord started this drive on the 25-yard line. They're now into Stampeder territory at the 53-yard line. Yell complete. 
The number 20, Harold Bailey, better get by the first man, still on his feet, finally brought down by Richie Hall. Well thrown football out in the flat. Bailey just went down and turned and outrun Richie Hall. Richie Hall gave him a little bit too much room and he can't get there. Quick throw. Right now, Richie Hall, you'll see, gives him a little bit too much room. He couldn't make it up. Slips off the tackle. Bailey runs. Ray Odom, one of the great tacklers. First down for the Concord. They spot the ball at the 39-yard line. The Stampeders. Wilson, the ball carrier. And he fights his way down to about 31, 32-yard line. Morrison in there to make the stop over the Stampeders. Well, I like the way Wilson runs. He just as a slasher. He got a good job up front from Burrell and Fairbanks. You know, Fairbanks moving into that guard position. That's two great big men up there. That's the way the rushing race shapes up in the CFL. Willard Reeves, of course, of Winnipeg, who said that uh, he might rush for 1,800 yards this season. He's making a lot of believers out of a lot of people with 1,300 already. He's got a shot at it. Terry Lyman, the ball carrier for the Concord. It's going to be a full yard short. That's what they do. They sent everybody away at their formation strength to the other side of the field and they tried to maybe get Calgary to over pursue, but they stayed home, made a good play, so they got at least one yard. All right, you're uh, Joe Galat, your head coach. What do you do here? Do you gamble, perhaps? I, I think they should have gone after this with one yard, but maybe they figured they got to get those three points when they can. Don Sweet will attempt the field goal. Jerry Dottilio was spotted at the 42-yard line. Flag is down on the play. And the kick. <laughs> Hitting the lone receiver there for the Calgary Stampeders Peters right on the helmet. It's going to be an interesting call. Let's see just what they call him. Well, it's going against Stampeders, Peters, right? Must have made contact. You know, I always thought the defensive player could jump and get back as long as he doesn't make contact. And Miles Durrell jumped for the Montreal Concord, and I was afraid he may call a procedure, but we'll see. Offside, Calgary number 65. Just down. Look at this, Ronnie. <laughs> That's using your head. Yeah, it is. Yeah. First down for the Concord. 10 minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. No score. Gill, electing to keep it himself, goes out at about the 18-yard line, 19-yard line of the Stampeders. And Trevor Bowles uh, throwing a good block there. A little play action. A little play action come out, Steve. Sorry. Todd Brown went down the last time and turned in. This time he went down and tried to beat him to the outside. Couldn't do it. Larry Hogue was right with him, so that Gill did what he does best, just take off and get five yards. Second down and five. Ball at the 20. Little movement at the line of scrimmage. And Trotman gets through to Turner Gill. But a flag is down on the play. I I think Calgary got a little bit over anxious. They were going to blitz. You saw the linebackers. They blitzed up the middle, but I think they moved early, and I think it was Troutman in the move. Stadium in Calgary on a beautiful fall. Just couldn't have asked for better weather. Hot class, Calgary number 62. First down. Well, you see West and Morrison going to blitz, but you see Troutman, the guy that they get, he jumps the gun, gets a, splits that seam with Garrell there, and he's into the backfield, but it hurt him. Now they give him a first down. And the ball's at the 15 yard line. Gill, I think that was a uh, called play, a quarterback draw. He took about two steps back, and then he came immediately forward. Well, he sent both backs to the left, so I think he was anticipating some sort of a man-to-man -man coverage where West and them would have to come out of there to chase those backs, but they didn't move. They fooled him. So it'll be second and ten for the Concord. Remember, this drive started at their own 25-yard line. They're now down to the 15-yard line at the Calgary Stampeders. Over the middle, complete to Araki. Touchdown. 
Turner Gill firing a beautiful pass to Nick Garaki. Well, he came right back again on the second down, and he blitzed West and Morrison up the middle. And as soon as you blitz them, you see them right there. There's no underneath help. And when you get a guy like Iraqi at six foot six, it's pretty tough for a defensive back to stop him. Richie Hall's like five foot six. So you throw that ball up high, Iraqi makes the easy catch, and Montreal gets the lead. That's his eighth touchdown of the season. He came into this game ninth in the CFL in pass receiving, 47 receptions for 724 yards. His 48th reception from Turner Gill was a touchdown. Don Sweet looks it through the uprights. So the score, Montreal Concord 7, the Calgary Stampeders nothing. Nine minutes and nine seconds remaining to play in the opening quarter here at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Yeah, this is Nicaraki on that touchdown. Well, you see, when you get a target like that coming over the middle with nobody underneath to help out Richie Hall, he doesn't have a chance against Iraqi. And Turner Gill moved that club down the field, and that's what Galat was hoping they start. And when you got a target like Iraqi, you got to use it. And Nicaraki was hurt on the play, had to be helped off the field. Concord kicking off. This is the newest of the Calgary Stampeders, Michael Harper, out of USC, where he followed in that long tradition of tailbacks. As we look at the way Calgary will line up offensively, Drake Babber, the starting quarterback, Walker and Petrus will be the running backs. McTagg, Massey, Levenseller, and Harper, the wide receivers for the Calgary Stampeders. And there's the offensive line. First and ten for the Stampeders. They trail 7-0. 6.53 remaining to play. Ball at the 30-yard line. Oh, swing pass to Walker. And Walker gets out to the 35-yard line. Brought down by Paul Gray. Puts all that strength out to the right. Four receivers over there. Just swings Lewis Walker out of there, but they pull both guards. Defensively, this is the way the Concord will line up against the Stampeders offense. And in the secondary, Francis, Faison, Jones, Hill, and Skipper. Joe Galat calls Francis and Skipper pride and joy. And Peters go to the air, and that was a catchable ball for Mike McTagg. There's no question about that. Well, the, what Montreal tried to do is they tried to cover that width of that field with only two people. Bill Jones has got to get a little bit further out. He's hanging on that hash mark, and he can't get to the sideline, and the ball's thrown perfectly. You have to catch this one. If he catches that, he's going to get at least 30 and maybe a touchdown. And you're asking a defensive back, Phil Jones, right there, number six, to do a big job, and he didn't get wide enough. So a punting situation for the Calgary Stampeders. Mike McTagg, who dropped that pass, will take the ball his own 20-yard line. You better hit a good kick. Preston Young. For the Concord, gets out to about the 43 or 45 yard line. So we're still in the first quarter here at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. And the Concord are leading Calgary 7 and up. Welcome back to McMahon Stadium in Calgary. I'm Steve Armitage along with Ron Lancaster. And there you see the scoreboard. Montreal in front of the Stampeders, 7 to nothing. Turner Gill firing a touchdown strike to Nick Araki. And Araki uh, had to be helped off the field, although uh, we've been looking at him on the uh, Montreal bench. He seems to be okay. He's back in the game, so he can't be hurting too bad. First and ten for Montreal. The give to Wilson, and Wilson gets out to the 50-yard line. Calgary coach Steve Barato. Very special day in his life. 41 years of age, celebrating birthday. That's what he said. He said he's still just a baby. And just a baby. Happy birthday. I asked him if he was going to celebrate, and he said, no, not unless we win. <laughs> Second and four now for Montreal. The ball up to 50. Turner Gill, complete to number 20, Harold Bailey. Sending the second receiver, Bailey, both passes he's caught. It's been the same thing. Just down turn to the sidelines, and then take that outside receiver and break him to the post. And he'd like to hit that big one to the post, but 
On second and five, Joe Glatt was saying today he got to get Turner used to taking that five yards in the flat, keep those drives alive, and so far he's done that, and his first mark was very impressive. Six minutes and a touchdown, that's about all you can ask. Yeah, that really tells the story. Montreal totally dominating. They are now inside the San Peter territory. Yell puts it up, looking for number 29, Todd Brown, but the ball goes out of bounds. A lot of pressure from Ballard on that uh, play, Ronnie. Well, Walter Ballard, as Steve was telling us earlier, he feels he's an excellent size, 6'3", 240, with excellent speed, and he's just uh, what you're looking for in a defensive end in the CFL, able to run, change direction. Feels if you get a little bit bigger than that, you have a little bit of trouble with that change in direction, but that pass right there, it's a good thing he threw it outside because uh, Ray Odom had the man covered. Second and 10, the ball at the 55-yard line. Now that was almost picked off. Bernie Morrison getting over into the flats to almost intercept that ball for the Calgary Stampeders. Well, they go to his own defense. Morrison just drops to that outside, watches that quarterback, and he cut right in front of the receiver, and he almost got that one. That's the one thing that you don't want to do. They've looked impressive getting things going. They don't want to turn it over now. They want to keep Calgary deep because their Montreal's defense is playing as well as anybody's right now in the CFL. Jerry McGrath set to punt for the Concord. Richie Hall will take it just inside his own five-yard line. And he crashes out to about the 18 or 19-yard line. So with five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, Montreal still lead by seven. That was a 51-yard punt from Jerry McGrath. Richie Hill returned to 15 yards for the Stampeders, so Calgary will scrimmage first and 10 from their own 17-yard line. Five minutes and 45 seconds remaining to play in the opening quarter. Montreal is mostly a zone defense team, which means those corners are going to be sitting out there, and Vavra loves to throw that flat pass. That's why McTagg was able to get behind him. We'll see what he does to counteract that. Vavra puts it up, complete. Rick Massey pulling it down at the 36-yard line right in front of Vince Faison. Rick Massey's from University of Kentucky, and he can't jump. What's the fake to Lewis Walker? Little fake. Now he gets outside. Massey just goes down here and finds a hole and stops. Throw it up high. He's got great jumping ability. Hangs on to the football. First and 10 for the Stampeders. The give this time to Lewis Walker, and he was brought down just as he got to the line of scrimmage. What was played well there is just the way Douglas Scott played at number 70. Walker would like to hit that inside of him and then break out. He forced him outside into the traffic. There's a lot of white jerseys there, and then he run him down. No gain on the play, second and 10. The ball at the Calgary 36-yard line. Screens it up the middle of Walker, and Walker ends up at around the 50s, but they'll probably mark it down around the 49-yard line. Again, Gianconi making the stop for the convoy. Very fortunate on the middle screen. They called it at the right time. They had one linebacker blitzing, and he came through and was picked up very well in the backfield, and he got the screen off. Walker just didn't get the block he needed. He needed one more block to make that first down. You see 42, one linebacker disappeared, Gray runs out of there. Excellent job by Molly on the play, but Walker cut the other side. Shane Coney brought him down, three yards short. Like the tag, punting from his own 35-yard line. Oh, a good punt, high, long. Bill Jones takes it inside his own 10, still on his feet, and comes up just shy of the 25-yard line when Montreal Concord will take over first and 10. And in 1988, of course, Calgary will play host to the Winter Olympics, and this is part of the building that's already underway for those games. This will be part of the Red and White Club that the Calgary Stampeders will use after the Olympics, and the bottom half of the building will be used by the Calgary Olympic Committee 
in organizing and putting the games together. So already with the games, what, three and a half years away? Construction beginning in Calgary. Turner Gill swing pass to Wilson. Oh, and Wilson is hit. The ball is loose. Boy, they caught a break right there. The ball bounced right back in the hands of Lloyd Fairbanks. They were very fortunate. This ball, it looks like it's going to be a big play, but really it's a lateral to Wilson. When he caught the ball, he had to be at least 12 yards behind the line of scrimmage. So he looked like he was gaining yards, but he was hit right on the line of scrimmage. And when they were very fortunate when that ball came loose, that Fairbanks missed his block and was there to get it. A loss of seven yards on the play. Second down is 17. Turner Gill firing right back into the middle. Lots of red shirts around there. Randy Troutman almost getting a hand on it. Randy Troutman played that screen pass about as well as you can ask in lineman to play it. He started his rush and he saw that back turn around and he just stayed there and made the hit. You see Turner roll out of there. You'll see 62 was coming on a stunt and he just happened to end up right where Lyman was trying to catch the football. Incomplete. Good field position coming for Calgary. Jerry McGrath punting does not hit it well. Now Jenkins into Concord territory still on his feet takes a tremendous hit and is stopped at about the 36 yard line by Steve Rocky of the Concord. That's one of those hits that you really have no control over because Jenkins caught that ball and he just went straight up field with it and he, when he got bumped he spins around and he just he doesn't know it's coming and bang excellent hit by Rocky but he's hurting they can't afford to lose him. Steve Rocky spelled racket or racket. Rocky. <laughs> Boy, they're very, very impressed with him. They watched him on film last year. He's in a rookie year out of Holy Cross University, and they felt that he would give them some pass rushing from those defensive ends is what they really needed, and he has done it for them. He's their leader in sacks. Number 64, Glenn Weir has come in for Rocky. Take one more look at it. You see Jenkins going right upfield. You see him get spin, spun around. Now he runs right into that shoulder of Rocky and he takes it on and bounces to the ground. And that's what they look like they're working on on him. Two minutes and 22 seconds remaining here from Van Stadium in Calgary in the opening quarter. The Concord are leading the Calgary Stampeders by a score of seven to nothing. Calgary and Montreal have met a total of 27 times since 1961. And the Stamps have the edge. They won 16, lost 10, and there's been one tie. This is the second meeting of the year between the Concord and the Stampeders. Montreal on the opener 28 to 14, but that's history. That was a long time ago. It sure was, and not only that, but I believe that's the first game that Greg Vavra got his opportunity to play in. And then since then, he has just taken over. He's been their starting quarterback. And I think he's the guy they're building the future of the Stampeders on. And as Steve Rado said today, he's learning something and doing something a little bit better every week. And if he continues to do that, he'd be a good one. Just a reminder for you junior football fans in the East, the final game for the regular season in the Ontario Football Conference will be played this weekend on Saturday. The Ottawa Sooners host the Montreal Concords at 1 p.m. While on Sunday, the Hamilton Hurricane visit the Oshawa Hawkeyes at 2 o'clock. Playoffs will start the following weekend with the national championship scheduled for November the 10th in Kelowna, B.C., the home of the Okanagan Sun. First and 10 for the Calgary Stampeders. They trail 7-0. Baffert to Lewis Walker, and Walker gets down to about the 32-yard line where he's met by Vince Spazon. Boy, they want to get the ball in the hands of Lewis Walker. He's also in his rookie year, and he's an excellent running back. They don't care whether they get it to him on the short passes or actually running with the ball, but they want number six to have it. That time, Spazon come up and made the tackle. That was a gain of four yards, so it'll be second and six for the Stampeders. He's marked the ball at the 32-yard line. Fabric. Quick pass. Complete to Mike McTagg. And Mike McTagg will have the first down. Andre Francis there to make the stop for the Concord. Well, you put all that strength away from you. All McTagg does is take about four quick steps downfield to stop. Fabric hits him. First down. There you see McTagg. He just stopped. You don't see any white jerseys around him. 
And Andre Francis is an excellent man-to-man -man player, and when he's that far off, you know it has to be his zone. Self first and ten for the Stampeders. Dabra completes the pass to number 21, Levenseller. That's his favorite pattern. He wants to clear that area and then bring Mike Levenseller out underneath it into the flat. And this time, Levenseller saw the corner out there, and he just stopped a little bit, slowed down. Dabra hit him eight yards. Second down, three yards to go for the Stampeders. And they'll do it from the Concord's 14-yard line. Fabra gives to Walker. Walker gets across the 10-yard line, probably down around the 9 or 8 is where they'll mark it. Martin and Sandy Armstrong in to make the stop for Montreal. Walker's very impressive as a running back, and the thing that I like about him, and the thing we noticed in his game last week in Hamilton, is regardless of how many players hit him, he always manages to fall forward, and that's a sign of a good back. Ball is spotted at the nine-yard line. First and goal to go for the San Peters. Pitch to Walker. Vince Faison to make the stop for Montreal. Boy, Vince Faison got into the backfield and everything and put the hit on Walker, but he is strong. He just ran right through the tackle. I thought it was a little unusual for him to put their short yardage team in there on a first down at the eight-yard line, but they're back. So the gun goes to end the first quarter here at McMahon Stadium. Montreal Concord leading the Stampeders 7-0. The second quarter just about to get underway here at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. The Stampeders are on a drive. They have taken the ball down to the seven-yard line of the Montreal Concord where they are second and goal to go. Steve Rocky is back into the game for the Concord after being shaken up. Kind of anxious to see what they run here. They put that uh, big team, their short yardage team in on first down. It's second and eight. They put their receivers back in and took them out again. And I noticed looking down there, McTagg's out of the game. Petrus is out of the game, trying to see just what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do. They're going to line up Harper in the backfield and run him this way. <laughs> A little play action. Intercepted by a Concord. Larry Skipper picking that one off for Montreal. You know, we were warned about this play by Coach Barato. We was anticipating it out at midfield. They were going to put Harper in the backfield and then a little play action to Walker and then just swing him down the sideline. But what happened was Harry Skipper sat in the zone and didn't fight on the, the inside man at all. He just stayed at home the way a good defensive back should, and he intercepted. That's why he's their leader in interception. He stayed where he belonged. Harry Skipper had that great game against the BC Lions with a couple of interceptions. Now you see Vavre laying it. This is one he'd love to have back because he shouldn't have thrown it. There's two white jerseys to one receiver. You're outnumbered. Your chances aren't very good. So the Montreal Concord take over first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. The gift to number 24, Terry Lyman. He gets out across the 30-yard line. Well, we said coming into the football game, it's going to be a matter of which one of their offenses could get going because they both have excellent defenses. Montreal looked very impressive on their first drive. Calgary hasn't things got started very good. Well, that's a good read. Good read. Iraqi took the man to the inside. Lyman has to go outside. That gets you yardage. Good back makes good reads. Pick up the six, second and four, Montreal. Gill rolling under pressure and finally forced out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. James West showing great speed that he has, forcing Gill out of bounds. Well, the first guy that got to him was Daryl Moyer and it looked like he was going to get around him, but he had help coming and that's all he wants. So now they're going to get good field position again. They lost a yard on the play. It'll be third and five. The Montreal punting unit comes into the game. That man there, James West, is quite a character. But what a football player. <laughs> and loves to dance. Sure does. McGrath gets good hang time on this punt. Taken by Richie Hall at the 40-yard line. The flag goes down. 
Hall battles his way out to the 42-yard line. We're in the second quarter here in Calgary. And right now, the Montreal Concord are leading the Stampeders. I work the CP River. I'm looking forward to the World Triathlon Championships on Sports Weekend next weekend. Have you ever tried a triathlon run? No, and I think those guys are crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they are really something, but I don't, no way could I handle that. I get enough trouble walking and chewing gum at the same time. First and 10, Stan Peters from North 30. Fast is in and out of the hands. That, again, was a catchable ball. Rick Massey should have had that one. Well, again, we say that Greg Babber has been throwing this pattern against every team he's played for. It's his best pass. He comes out, real quick roll, and just fires it in the flat. And Massey just dropped the ball that time. As you might suspect, uh, Montreal has a leading edge in the stats in that first quarter, 85 to 60. Not, total yards. Not bad balance, is it? 46 in the air, 46 on the ground. Second and 10, Stan Peters. Babra fires intended on the sidelines there for the newcomer, number 88, Mike Harper. That man right there, Harry Skipper, it's a good thing the ball was thrown out of bounds because he was in the position to pick it off and go down that sideline. I'll tell you, Montreal's two corners, Andre Francis and Skipper, I really enjoyed that article in the paper on both of them yesterday. It was just a great article to read about two, two young players. Skipper's in his second year, I believe, and Andre Francis on the other side. They are excellent cornerbacks. Joe Galak calls him pride and joy. And well, he might. They have certainly done a great job for the Concord this year. Mike McTagg will get this putt away. It's a high snap, but he pulls it down, and then he shanks one. Reminiscent of last week against Hamilton, and not quite as bad as the one in Hamilton. That one only went about five yards. Harry Skipper getting in on Mike McTagg and almost getting a hand on him. Well, Skipper's coming from that outside on a punt rush. You'll see the high snap. He's going to have to jump to get it. Just to come back down in our picture, and 26 is going to go flying by. And as a result, a bad kick. He was fortunate with the bounce. At least he gained some yards. But last week, it looked like he kicked it straight out. 12 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Montreal leading Calgary 7 to nothing, And the Concord first and 10 from their own 46. To give to Wilson. Breaks one tackle, can't get by the second. Daryl Moyer was there to make the stop. Was Nazenski was the first man in. So Daryl Moyer's coming that way anyhow, and all he does is stay right with the ball carrier, and he just floats right back across, and he comes up from safety position. He's a good one. Pick up a three yards on the play, second and seven for the Concord. Little action on the Calgary line. Gill over the middle to the big target, Araki. He's got lots of space. And perhaps he shouldn't have uh, held up there. And he turned on the speed. He gets down to the 25-yard line, and Ray Odoms finally brings it down. I think his hesitation may have cost him there. Well, what you're going to see, once again, you see those two linebackers, Morrison and West. Same situation as the touchdown. No underneath help. And Araki, as you say, he's trying to find a uh, straight shot to that goal line and he hesitated and gets hit from behind along with Odom's in the front but again with no underneath help he's a very very difficult guy to stop first and 10 Concord after a pickup of 38 yards Wilson and he too has got some room a little bit of daylight crashes down to just outside the 10 yard line of the Stampeders Darrell Moyer making the tackle Boy, the impressive thing about this is watch him get it. Now, he's got the draw. He can run anywhere he wants. All right, he gets inside and goes out. But watch now. Right now, he turns upfield, and he splits them. Picks up some extra yards, and one of the Calgary Stampeders is hurt on the collision with his own man. Looks like the injured man might be Richie Hall, as Joe Galat looks on. Greg Peterson has come into the ball game for the Calgary Stampeders. Ten minutes and 38 seconds remaining to play in the first half here at McMahon Stadium. Montreal leading Calgary 7 to nothing. That touchdown coming in the first quarter. Turner Gill to Nicaraki. Well, you'll see Hall come in from the outside, left to right. 
he hits Wilson, but his own man, he collides with Bernie Morrison. And that's how he gets hurt because of the fact that when Wilson turns up field, coaches like to call it a north-south runner, a guy that's heading for that goal line, and that's what Wilson was doing. And as a result, he split the two defenders, and Richie Hall got the first of it from his own man. Richie Hall receiving attention from the Calgary Stampede training staff. And Joe Gallant, I thought, very relaxed in the last couple of days here in Calgary. He was very relaxed this morning. We sat for about three or four hours this morning at breakfast, and we went through his football team, and he was talking about how he's been able to recruit his football players out of the college ranks and bring them on and get them experience as a group. Okay, with 10 minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the second uh, first half, it's Montreal in front of the Stampeders, 7-0. The Olympics come up. Miss Calgary Stampeder for 1984, Sandra Jansen. She, of course, will represent the Stampeder Football Club at the Great Cup pageant. Just a little north of here come the end of November. Great Cup time in Edmonton. The Montreal Concord as Richie Hall is helped off the field, favoring his shoulder. Really on the march here, first and 10. And they'll scrimmage from the 13-yard line. Gill. Elects to keep it himself and goes down to the Stampeder six-yard line. Bernie Morrison there to make the stop. Joe Glad has to be pretty impressed with the game Turner Gill's play to this point. He wanted it to start running. This time he goes back, takes a look downfield, and Calgary played it well. He just comes right up the middle, takes a quick look, turns it straight ahead, sees he's going to be hit, hit the ground. Don't get hurt like that. Play a lot longer like that. That's a six-yard pickup. Second and four. Just outside the five-yard line. Gill. And I think he may have thrown that one out of bounds on purpose. Very wide. They were all covered. Every one of his receivers was covered. He just threw it as far as he could throw it out there and let the fans have that one. Joe Galat very impressed uh, with the progress of Turner Gill coming from Nebraska. I wonder how Turner Gill felt uh, when he heard that Nebraska had been beaten today. Well, I think that was a surprise to everybody. You know, they were top ranked in the country as they normally are every year. And Turner Gill comes from a great football school, but I think they had to be a little shocked today. With third and four, the Concord will elect to try the field goal. Don Sweet. From the 12-yard line. And as he's done so many times in his outstanding CFL career, Don Sweet splits the uprights to put the Montreal Concord in front of the Calgary Stampeders 10 to nothing. He just doesn't miss from those, those areas. Anywhere from 10 out to 40, he's deadly. His only problem this year has been he's 0 for 4 from 50 yards, but outside of that, he is just on target all the time. Coach Barato's got to be hoping that soon the Stampeder offense gets going. We had a nice talk with him today. He was very pleasant. We must have spent a couple of hours with uh, Steve Barato uh, in his office here at McMahon Stadium. Calgary Stampeders now first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. To give to Lewis Walker, and Walker picks up a couple. Well, John Pointer also played that draw very well. He did the same thing West did a while ago. He did not leave his position until that quarterback goes past the ball carrier, and he didn't, so he comes up and makes the tackle. A gain of two, second and eight for the Stampeders, who trail by 10. 10-0. Eight minutes and 49 seconds remaining to play in the second quarter. Zabra complete almost to Mike McTaggan again, Ronnie. That was a pass that I think if McTagg had to do it all over again, he could have got it. I think Mike McTagg turned his head a little bit on that one. I think he was expecting to be hit by Andre Francis, and he turned that head, and as a result, the ball come out. But Maybe we'll get a good look at it, but the ball's definitely got to be caught. He got it over the linebacker's head, as you'll see, in the hole. As he turned that head, the ball fell out. Boy, those are killers. They'll kill drives every time. Phil Jones and Young to receive this punt from Mike McTagg. Again, McTagg having to punt, mainly because he dropped the pass. Gets a good punt away. Taken by Preston Young. 
looking for running room on the sidelines, gets out to the 43-yard line. So with eight minutes and 14 seconds to play, the Concord in front of the Stampeders, 10-0. Canada. Looking forward to Grey Cup 84 in Edmonton. I know you are, Ron. Well, it seems funny, you know, I feel like the season hasn't started, but, the, you know, when they start talking Grey Cup, you know, the playoffs can't be far away. And yeah, it's always a fun time. It's a great place to be, and I know Edmonton will be fun. First and 10, Montreal. The ball at their own 42 and a half yard line. <laughs> Wilson. Battles out to about the 46 or 47 yard line. Greg Peterson there to make the stop for the Stampeders. Like Greg Peterson's in his first year also. He's out of Brigham Young University. He's a Canadian kid from Calgary. Went to school down there. He's been waiting to get the opportunity to play. He played corner in college and they've got him up here in a position to play anywhere, but he's more at home as what the coaches say inside at that halfback position. Peterson replacing Richie Hall, who we understand has an elbow injury. Again, a four in that last play, second and six for the Concord. Over the middle, and it's complete. Number 20, Harold Bailey pulling that one down for the Concord to give them the first down. Bailey just got man coverage from down and faked like he was going to hook and went outside. Put it right where he could get it. He went up, made the catch. Testing the rookie right away, aren't they? Good call, good execution on the part of the Concord. We now have first and 10 from the Stampeders 40. We give to Wilson. And Wilson gets down to the 36-yard line. Larry Hogue is there to make the stop. Not able to run inside where he wants to go. He's got a game going on with the linebacker, so he tries to bounce outside. But Larry Hogue is there. He makes the first hit, and Wozniczynski's there to help. And Steve Carpenter puts him down. Pick up a two, second and eight. For the Concord. This time, Gill finds number 29, Todd Brown, down just inside the 25 yard line of the Stampeders. First down for Montreal. They lead the Stampeders 10 to nothing. In the standings, well, you see Turner Gill. He takes Brown outside, and the play he hit the Bailey, you'll see Bailey going deep to the corner. Ray Odoms drops back. That opens that outside area, and right into the into the zone where it should be thrown. And again, a very impressive mark by the Concord. Gill. Trying to find number 20, Harold Bailey, who was open. The ball was uh, overthrown on the part of Gill. Well, he got the man-to-man -man coverage. He got the rookie on Harold Bailey. who has got some NFL experience. Plus, he's a, an excellent athlete. He had to get some help by Daryl Moyer coming over to help him. But as you say, uh, the ball's overthrown. See Joe Glatt. He's hollering out something. He wants something run. Getting back probably... to those standings, Ronnie, and just how important this game is for the Montreal Alouette. Should they win, they go to 11 points. Leaves them three behind Toronto, but three in front of the Ottawa Rough Riders. Second and ten now for the Concord. And again, the ball was over 20. He was looking for Nick Araki, but uh, Araki wasn't within eight, nine yards of that ball. Well, the Concord this time are in a definite passing situation, and the uh, Stampeders right here they blitz the halfback and what happens joe glatt was saying today they have option reads he ran the hook turner gill thought he was going to go deep and iraqi stopped gill threw it in the end zone so he's nobody there he pulled it up he figured he was going deep and complete but when you come after him with that halfback you got one-on-one -on -one coverage all over the field so that'll bring on the talented toe of don sweet again this time the ball goes down at the 31 yard line it is good montreal concord now lead the Calgary Stampeders 13 to nothing. Five minutes and two seconds remaining to play 
in the second quarter here on a beautiful night for football at McMahon Stadium. Hard to believe that just a few days ago this stadium was covered with snow. Yeah, Steve Rado and John Lyra are saying it's a much better night to play football than what they've been practicing in this week. He's not having a very happy birthday right now. He's got to get things on track and get them going. He said that was the birthday present he wanted, a victory. First and ten, Stampeders to give to Lewis Walker, and Walker does a neat piece of running. Straight ahead running, showing good power, good determination. Gets out across the 45-yard line before he's brought down by Penn Space on. Powerful runner. He just run over people in there. The line get him into that secondary, and then those defensive backs have to stop him. That's not the easiest thing to do. First and ten, Stampeders. On their own 45. Babra completes it on the sidelines right in front of the Calgary bench. To the newcomer, Michael Harper. So that's his first reception in the CFL. He's probably glad to get that. I know Babra had a little pressure on him. He's being chased pretty good in there by John Pointer, but Babra is an excellent sprint out quarterback. He throws well on the run. Harper was just, just been he's been in town two weeks what he's been here which is perfect they just didn't feel he was ready he wasn't ready enough last week I guess he hadn't seen enough balls he said he had trouble adjusting to the rules the balls at midfield second and one for the Stampeders Vavra on the keep just goes up the middle and should have the first down with about a yard to spare Steve Barato was telling us that uh, the key to Greg Vavra in terms of passing is to watch where the ball comes from. If he's throwing the ball wide of the helmet, he's throwing well. If he tucks it inside, nine times out of ten, he's going to throw it into the dirt or high. Yeah, when you come through with a football, the ball should be above the helmet and a nice fluid throwing motion. If you get it down too tight, your, your arm tightens up and you don't have the control on it. It gets away from it. First and ten, Stan Peters. Dabber puts it up. Intended there for Levin Seller. Levin Seller managed to get a hand on it, but uh, couldn't bring it down. Well, Evan Seller managed to get in behind Vince Faison. Harper cleared the area for him, but the ball was just a little bit too high, and it was high because he had to get the ball over Faison's head. Mensoulis is into the game for the Stampeders, wearing number 23 as a wide receiver, and he is now split wide to the top of your screen. Second and ten. Tag is out of the ball game. by Rocky. Well, the Montreal Concord lineup, we said they like to play a lot of zone defense, but this time, watch Gray. This is one linebacker. He's going to try to come through here, but here's the guy that does the damage on the outside rush, Steve Rocky, who has been their leader in the sack. You see Paul Gray right up the middle, but the guy coming outside, Gray forces him deep, and that allows Rocky to get to him. They lose quite a bit of yardage. They got about 30 yards to go for a first down after those two plays. Rocky had 13 and a half sacks coming into this game for the Montreal Concord, putting them now in a punting situation. The tag, high one. Preston Young takes it at his own 25-yard line. A flag goes down. No yards, probably the indication. So, with two minutes and 46 seconds remaining till halftime, it's the Concord in front of the Stampeders, 13-0. We want to change. We'll have the CBC National News, and Brian Williams will have highlights from the CFL. on a no yards penalty the ball is advanced to the 40 yard line where the Montreal Concord are now first and 10 two minutes and 33 seconds remaining to play in the second quarter the give us to Lyman Lyman hesitated there hoping that a hole would open up he picks up about a yard no more Lyon wasn't as Esky in there to make the tackle for the stamps well he tries to go inside and the middle linebacker West waiting on him now he wants to bounce it outside but the linebackers Steve Carpenter, 96, is going to come across to make that tackle. They got a lot of time left, 221. If you're a Calgary fan, they've got to make a defensive stand to get that ball back, get that offense rolling to go in at halftime with some uh, momentum and enthusiasm. A gain of one, second and nine, Montreal. 
Gill under pressure and brought down. Lyle was Mazinski who came into this game leading the Calgary Stampeders in sacks and picks up a big one right there. Wash Mazinski's playing as good a football as he's ever played. He's having an outstanding year for the Stampeders. He just came around Trevor Bowles at the tackle position that time just with straight speed. He didn't use any moves or anything. You'll see Turner Gill go out. He's back to coming around to the right. Watson Zensky got those shoulders inside, and he just come in and put the sack on him. So Calgary's going to have two minutes to see if they can get something going. Third and 15 for Montreal. Greg McGrath set to punt. Mel Jenkins takes it at his own 25-yard line and is brought down before he could get to the 30 by Aaron Hill, number eight for Montreal. Yeah, the Concord claiming the ball came loose and uh, they picked it up, but the referee gives possession to the Calgary Stampeders. They'll scrimmage first and 10 from their own 28-yard line with a minute and 51 seconds remaining to play in the second quarter. They've still got enough time to get some points on this last drive before the end of the half, and they really need it. Their offense has been struggling a little bit. Adding to that stat on Greg Fabra, he threw his first touchdown pass against Montreal, also his first interception. That time he gave to Lewis Walker, and Walker lost about a yard. John Porter, free Walker down. Well, that Montreal defense is as tough as any. John Pointer fits right in there. He's an excellent football player. He's played with a few other clubs. And he had an outstanding season with Winnipeg before he left, but I know he's happy to be playing football right now, and we may get some consideration if we get to those Carlton O'Keefe game stars after this one's over. Walker was brought down on the 25-yard line of St. Peter's, so it'll be second and 14. Fabra. Complete to Michael Harper. And Harper knocks out of bounds, but he has the first down for the Stampeders. Well, Concord went into that zone defense, and then Harry Skipper's up close. Preston Young can't get there, and Harper just gets into that scene, that little crack behind Skipper and in front of the other guy, first down. So they've got things rolling. You see, right in that dead spot, Joan. Preston Young can't get there, and it's over Skipper's head. Harper does a, a good move. Get into that area and stop. Give the quarterback a target. That was a gain of 23 yards. First and 10 for the Stampeders. Minute 26 remaining until halftime. Fabra going long. Again, trying to find Harper. And Harry Skipper made the reception, but he was out of bounds. You know, we were talking to Steve Barato about that. He said this could happen. This play is a is a running play, but Babra has the option of faking it and coming out by himself, and then Harper, with his great speed, is just going to take off downfield, and nobody knows but those two what's going to happen. But that time, Skipper was staying back there, and Phil Jones wasn't fooled a bit. He was over there to help him, and Skipper just misses it. But it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. He wants to run by him and hope there's no one there, but he's back too deep. Babra threw it, but Skipper had excellent cover. You don't cover it any better than that. Harper has good speed. He's been blocked at 4-3-4-4 for the 40 yards. Baber, second and 10, fires back through the middle again, looking for Harper, and that time it was through his hands. Flag down on the play. He's got pretty good uh, football sense, too. He ran down and hooked around that linebacker. He just forgot one thing, catch the ball. Penalty against the Montreal Concord, a roughing penalty, so this is a big gain. Major foul, roughing the passer, Montreal number 61. Sandy Armstrong came through, and Harper, as we said, just dropped the football. You know, now instead of having them punt the football to you, you keep that drive alive. It's one thing Coach Glatt won't be too happy about. The first penalty and it hurt him. First and ten for the Stampeders from the Montreal 48-yard line. The swing pass to Walker. Walker crashes down inside the 40-yard line of the Concord. John Porter makes the tackle for Montreal. Just like a running play, even though the ball's thrown by the quarterback and everything, it's just like a run. They pull those linemen out in front of him and give him the ball, and then it's just up to him to find daylight from there, and he's good at that. 
Lots of time for the Stampeders to get on the scoreboard. They trail 13 to nothing. Could Clock hurry. is running. Could hurry a little bit. Time's wasting on them. The pitch this time to Walker. And Walker tripped up there by Vince Faison. Well, Faison was into that offensive backfield in a hurry. And he tripped Walker up. Now there's a fly down. Joe Gallat looking on. He seems calm, cool, and collected. Unlike the players on the field whose tempers beginning to flare. No sportsmanlike conduct. Boy, you don't need that. Well, you certainly don't need that kind of uh, behavior from your players. Objectionable conduct. Montreal number 71. First down. So a couple of penalties have kept the drive alive for the Calgary Stampeders who trail Montreal 13 to nothing now with 54 seconds for many playing the second quarter. I know what he's telling them. That the ball came loose after the play was whistled dead and he dives across. What 71 laying on the ground. The ball's loose but the whistle's blown and he dives over top to get the football and he gets it. You see him with the ball and they call him for that. Or maybe he said something to the official and questioned his ancestry or something. I don't know. Oh, gosh, golly, Mr. Referee. Sandy Armstrong, the injured player for Montreal, getting some attention from the Montreal training staff would appear to be a knee. You don't like that where they've got that trainer's got his hands messing around with that knee. That's not good. Or at least by a pretty good team in the NFL, Los Angeles Raiders. They're not bad. He's a good football player and he's really helped them. Montreal four for 35, two for 25, Calgary four for 35. But the two penalties have been costly ones in keeping this Calgary drive alive. First and 10, Stan Peters. Fabra. Intercepted. Intercepted his right. Bill Jones. <laughs> he stopped in the end zone, then decided he was going to run. And he got it out across the 10 yard line. That was probably the easiest interception that Jones will have all year. Well, they'd hit that pattern to Harper, as we said earlier, right in that scene. But this time, Jones was just back there waiting on it. He didn't hardly have to move. You see, Vavra takes that look. He's going to try to throw it over Harry Skipper's head, which he does. But Bill Jones is just waiting on it. He stopped right here, and then he decides he wants to run it out, but he had stepped out of bounds. Now we'll see it. Right in that hole is where he's got to catch that football. It's thrown too far inside. Easy. He, as you say, well, he'll never get an easier one. Paul well, Harper certainly seems to have the speed, but he's not getting open. Montreal first and ten to get to Wilson. Wilson gets out across the 30-yard line. 42 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock here at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Montreal in front, 13 to nothing. Pick up a five on the last play, second and five now for the contour. The give to Wilson. And Wilson gets the first down with two or three yards to spare. Mark Nelson there to make the tackle for the Stamps. Boy, when Wilson's running, you can just see him with those eyes open when he goes through there looking for a hole. And when he finds it, he turns it upfield in a hurry. He gets the first down. Now they're going to be able to, with 19 seconds left, to kill this first half off and win with the lead of 13 nothing at the half. Wilson looking for running room outside and he stops the clock with two seconds remaining to play. Had Wilson elected to cut it upfield, he might have been able to run out the remaining seconds on the clock. So the Montreal Concord will get another chance to put the ball into play. I think Joe Galat will be happy going to the dressing room with 13-0 lead. 
very happy. You know, your defense has shut him down. You've got 13 points on the board, 30 minutes left. He'll be happy to get these two seconds out of the way and win and talk things over. Second and six for the Concord. Two seconds remaining to play. This will be the last play of the first half, barring penalties. The whistle goes. And the first half ends here at McMahon Stadium. The Montreal Concord go into the dressing room with a 13-0 lead. We'll be back with the CBC National News. George, and at the half, Montreal leads Calgary 13-0. All of first half highlights in just a minute. Let's go back to last night. Good football game before more than 47,000 at the Commonwealth Stadium. Second half, Roy DeWalt and Ed Armour. Armour's second of the game. BC looked to be home free, 24-9. Edmonton finally gets going. What a play. Matt Dunnigan to Chris Woods. A couple of good moves here by Woods. And then, well, really, it's just goodbye. It's a foot race, 81 yards. Edmonton was back in the game. What a story Matt Dunnigan has been. He is bringing the fans back. He has done the job. He runs it in to tie the game at 24. Then with 39 seconds to go, Lou Pasaglia's 54-yarder for the BC Lions. It is good. Dave Cutler was to miss. Lions win 34-32. They trail Winnipeg by one point. With the Edmonton loss, Calgary is only two points behind the Eskimos. Calgary not doing much tonight, though, to gain ground on Edmonton. They trail at halftime by a score of 13-0. The only touchdown of the game scored on the first play, the first series of the game. The Concord going the length of the field, led by Turner Gill. Nebraska rookie hitting Nicaraki out of Bishops. Montreal led 7-0. Concord should have had two more touchdowns, really, but settled for two field goals by Don Sweet. They lead by 13. Coming up, the second half kickoff live with Steve Armitage and Ron Lancaster from McMahon Stadium in Calgary as CFL 84 continues. Third straight game, the Montreal Concord have really been playing well, both offensively and defensively. One of their big stars offensively has been Nick Araki. Well, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to get things together, and uh, it's, it's a good time of year to do it now. We're getting close to playoffs, and we're trying to get our acts together. The defense has been playing super and keeping us in the game, so uh, we gotta we got to help them out and score some points every time we get the ball. Nick, uh, what's enabling you to get open? Uh, I, I, they're blitzing us a lot, and uh, we seem to be doing well against blitz. Uh, so, you know, the blitz is kind of a double-edged sword, and uh, it's been uh, helping us out. Uh, if it works, it's, uh, for, the, for the defense, it can create a lot of problems for the offense, but uh, we're, we're blocking it up real good, and uh, we're working on it every week because we expect people to blitz us because we've got three young quarterbacks, and well, things are working out for us, so uh, I hope we can keep going in the second half. Nick, thank you very much. Thank you. And there you see the statistical story in the first half here at McMahon Stadium. A nice balance run on the part of the Montreal Concord. 91 yards rushing, 121 yards passing for a total of 196. And that really has been the story, the balance. Well, that's a coach's dream. When you can get that running game going and carry the half the load, it sure takes the pressure off the passing game. And the coaches are happy because it keeps the defenses off guard. Montreal Concord kicking off to get this second half underway. They lead 13 to nothing. It's Harper returning it for the Calgary Stampeders, and he gets out to about the 23 yard line. Harry Skipper there to make the tackle for the Concord. Well, Greg Ravers, he's got to get this thing going for him, and I don't think he's going to get too many more series of downs. I think if he doesn't get things going quick, we're liable to see Bernard Quarles in there because. Coyles had that great year last year as a rookie, and Babbers taken over this year, but I'll tell you what, it hasn't been their night so far. That Montreal defense has shut them down. Well, the Calgary Stampeders only down 13 to nothing. That is not a big margin. First and 10 for the Stampeders from their own 23-yard line. Babbers gives to Lewis Walker. Walker looking for daylight and gets all the way out to about the 40-yard line, and much of that Walker made by himself. Boy, he broke some tackles coming through there. John Pointer had a shot at him, but this guy is, the more you see him, the more impressive and the more impressed you have to be with him. You watch him take the ball, he gets those eyes, gets that hip turned upfield right here. You know, John Pointer's a good tackler. He's not giving him a good shot. Keep rolling, first down. Vavra has the pass knocked down by Rocky. Rocky getting his 6'5", 240-pound frame in the way of that intended pass from Greg, Greg Babra. This entire Montreal defense, you have to be impressed with them. And you know, as Iraqi said in his interview, with those playoffs coming, 
that's when your defense has to come to the front, and that's what wins championships, and that Concord defense is top. Second and 10 for the Stampeders. We spot the ball at the 40-yard line of Calgary. Vavra, and that's incomplete. Intended for number 23, Bill Mensoulis. Well, those are tough throws for the quarterback. You mean, we've said that Vavra likes to sprint out and throw the football. He throws better on the run. This time, he dropped back and tried to throw that 14, 15 yard out. Difficult pass to throw. He didn't get it far enough. The receiver was open. Yeah, it's been a tough night for that man on the sidelines celebrating his 41st birthday. Steve Barato, the head coach of the Calgary Stampeders, as Mike McTagg will get this punt away from his own 25 yard line. Preston Young for the Concord. Flags go down. And Concord, <laughs> Preston Young is still going. He may have seen the flag go down, heard the whistle, but he wasn't uh, listening. He, he was just going straight ahead. He had to be the most disappointed guy in the stadium when he's running downfield and breaks those tackles and see those flags 90% of the time there against the return team. And this time, no exception. Illegal use of the hands. Going to nullify the run and lose them 10 yards. That was a 38-yard punt from Mike McTagg as Turner Gill, who has gone all the way at quarterback for the Montreal Concours. Comes out of the field. Gill, number 64. First down. There it is, 64. Glenn Weir ran right over the back, and you just can't do that. First and 10, Montreal from the road 25. A give to Dwayne Wilson, and Wilson gets out across the 36-yard line. Bernie Morrison there to make the tackle for the Stampeders. Well, Dwayne Wilson's getting that ball about five yards deep in the backfield, and when he starts forward, he's looking for somewhere to run. That time, he cut all the way back against the flow, picked up five yards. Five-yard average, that's what he's carrying coming into the game, and if he can maintain that, he'll gain a lot of yards. Second and four for the Concord. Lyman, and he'll be close to the first down. He bounced right off of Steve Carpenter. He, Carpenter made contact with him just about at the line of scrimmage. He hit and spun back inside, and as you say, he got the first down for them. 12 minutes and 17 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter here at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Montreal Concord in front of the Stampeders, 13 to nothing. They have the ball, and they have a bit of a drive going. First and 10. Wilson, and this time, he goes nowhere. Wazniczewski lined him up and made the tackle. Well, this time, Wilson, as we said, he's going to run wherever he sees daylight, and he just kept looking for some, and then decided he's going to beat him outside, and Wazniczewski said, I've been around too long to have that happen to me. <laughs> Wilson's gain is one yard, second and nine for Montreal. complete and then in and out of the arm but they rule it a reception Todd Brown catching the ball it came loose but they indicate that he had time and possession and the fumble came after the reception well regardless of what happened a well executed play they blitzed again they blitzed from the halfback position they sent Larry Hogue on a blitz which means Daryl Boyer has to get over there and as soon as Todd Brown saw that he stopped Gill hit him with the football. That's a pretty good report between uh, quarterback and receiver. That was an 11-yard gain. Gill is now 8 for 14 on the night. First and 10, Montreal. Lyman, the fullback, gets out across midfield just into Stampeder territory. Steve Wilbur makes a tackle for Stamps. Two rookie running backs. You know, he looks at that Concord offensive backfield with Gill, Lyman, and Wilson. They're all rookies. He does a good job running, too. Second and four.
Gill elects to keep it himself and gets uh, down just outside the Stampeders 45 yard line. Steve Wilburn is in there to make the stop. What's nice about that run, Turner Gill was in a position. He was looking downfield and when he decided to, to run with the football, he still carried the ball up high and made that little pump fake. And now, now he's running. There he is, James West, right, waiting on him. West got that broken bone in that broken thumb and that big club that he's got on there. Even when, with that protection, it still hurts. First and 10, Montreal. The get to Lyman, and he crashes over the tackle for a couple of yards. Was Nazeski in there to make the stop? One thing about this drive, Steve, I think is worth noting. They've only thrown the ball when they've had to. They're running Lyman, Gill, and Wilson, and that's using up time on the clock, plus they're moving the football. And I'll tell you what, when they get a running game going, they use it to their advantage, and they do a good job of it. Second and seven for the contour. Turner Gill, by the way, has 31 yards rushing tonight. This time he passes, and there was no way that number 22, Mike Washburn, was going to get to that unless he had a step left. And it's probably a good thing because he had Darrell Moyer just waiting on him, and he didn't cut the legs right off from under him. So get that one deep. Nobody gets it. Nobody gets hurt. Now they can do what they want, field goal or punt. Let's see what they do. Eight minutes and 47 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. 13 to nothing in favor of Montreal, who with a victory here would run their record to five wins and six losses and give them 11 points in the standings, three behind Toronto. Well, they're right at his maximum. He's 0 for 4 from outside of 50 yards, so they put the tee down just inside so he know he can make it. <laughs> Psychologically, he <laughs> might have a chance here. Just inside the 50-yard line for Don Sweet. Field goal attempt. That's illegal. Has it got legs? Just wide. Nope, just wide and a little bit short, I'm afraid. Daryl Moyer takes it and goes down in the end zone. So, one point for the Montreal Concord. Their margin over the Stampeders, now 14-0. From JVC. Brand new dimensions in sight and sound. A full line of VCRs, all with JVC's amazing forehead recording system. High definition TVs that are fully remote and ready for the video age. JVC, taking you beyond innovation to bring you the pictures of the future. Available at these selected locations. You got everything for the big pitch in Pittsburgh, Pete? Yeah, I got it all, Paul. Got the slides? Yeah, I got the slides. Got the charts? Yeah, I got the charts. You got the audio? Yeah, I got the audio. You got the video? Yeah, I got the video. Don't forget the contracts. I won't forget the contracts. I forgot the contracts. You forgot the contracts. When you forget, remember Federal Express. They guarantee overnight delivery to the U.S. by 10.30 a.m. or you don't pay. You got the contracts? Yeah, I got the contracts. Montreal getting a single point from a missed field goal. It was a 50-yard attempt on the part of Don Sweet. So the Concord now in front, 14 to nothing. And the Calgary Stampeders will now scrimmage first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. They trail 14 to nothing. Still lots of time remaining to play in this ball game. And he gets across the 45-yard line. John Pointer making the tackle for the Concord. Well, Vince Faison wasn't in on that tackle, but he comes up from that halfback position real hard to the outside. That forces Walker to cut back. And when he does, you're going to run into those big linemen that are pursuing the play. And, you know, you can't... That's, that's, that's a plus for a player, but no one notices it. And he gets right into that backfield and causes trouble. Second and seven, Stan Peters. Babra almost had that picked off, intended for Levenseller. But Aaron Hill stepped in front of the intended receiver. Vince Faison was also in the area. Okay, you can see Faison just at the bottom of the screen, dropping outside. Now, when that ball's thrown, your job, go get it. And he does. Almost intercepted. 
Faison's playing a good football game. You may get some consideration. Uh, you know, you're going to have to pick those, Steve. It's your turn. My turn? Yeah. No problem. Third down, seven to go for the Stampeders. That brings on Mike McTagg. Get this punt away from his own 35-yard line. Very high, good punt by McTagg. Preston Young takes it at his own six. Looking for running room on the outside. Gets out to about the 17 or 18-yard line. So with 7.07 remaining to play in the third quarter, Montreal in front of the Stampeders, 14-0. As you remember, class, last week's Lotto 649 lesson on preparing for the big win, we covered Palm Beach, Platinum, and Polo. Today's Lotto 649 lesson is on going home. Home, James. Home, James. Home, James. Home, James. Home, James. No, 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 no. Home, no. oh, James. Home, oh, James. Lotto 649, exceptionally attractive prizes. One dollar the ticket. Will you be ready? In just two years since its introduction, this compact pickup has leapt ahead of all its competitors. Overtaken the imports, overtaken the domestics. Ford Ranger, now number one in compact pickups. Number one in sales. In North America, Ranger outsells Chevy S10, Toyota, and Nissan. Number one in quality. Owner survey shows no one beats Ranger, import or domestic. And now Ranger is number one in price. Lowest of any compact pickup. Ford Ranger, number one in quality, sales and value. And built Ford top. And just a reminder, two games tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern. Could it be a Grey Cup preview from Toronto? That's followed by the Battle of the Rough Riders from Taylor Field. Please check local listings for the game and time in your area tomorrow. 7.07 to play in the third quarter. Montreal in front of the Stampeders, 14 to nothing. A 58-yard punt by Mike McTagg has got the Montreal Concord deep in their own territory. They're first and 10 from their own nine. Gill to Dwayne Wilson. Wilson tries to get outside, gets out about the 14 and a half yard line where it runs into Miles Gorell. Well, this time they, they get the ball to Wilson deep in the backfield. This time, instead of letting him run the daylight, they bring that big man, Miles Gorell. And I'll tell you what, for a guy 300 pounds, he rolled around that corner with authority and made a good block. See Troutman, Randy Troutman, having a little bit of trouble. I'll tell you, if he ran into Miles Gorell, he ran into a big man. Boy, he sure did. Gorell got great speed coming around there. Well, maybe we can see what happened to Troutman. You see him number 62 there. They pull that guard. He tries to go, and he gets a, a block by the center, Montreal center, Doug Smith, and then catches that helmet right on the knee. And that's why he's down right now. While we're down, we better take care of this disclaimer for Leo. He's not here, and I want to make sure we get it in before he goes to bed. Give it your best shot, because I guarantee you Leo's uh, well, listening. Well, I don't know. It's a little late. Leo's getting a little older. He needs to sleep. But anyway, this program is copyrighted and is strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or exhibition in Moeller and Park without the express written consent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is strictly prohibited. On a scale of 10, that was a 9. Well, I got a little mixed up, but... Leo, he's a little bit old now. He's got to go to bed early. You know, when you get a little older, you need to rest. Sean McEwen is in there, the big boy from Western Ontario that they drafted, and they think he's going to be a football player. Second of five for the Concord from their own 15-yard line. Flag goes down. But the pass is complete. At the 26-yard line of the Concord. Offensive holding the first indication from the referee, John Ireland. Chuck McMahon made the catch down there, but my referee threw that flag in a hurry. They're going to get a penalty again, and that's going to hurt them. They're going to send in another play with Washburn. He'll bring this one in. I think they'll be a little bit careful with this one. They're either going to throw it deep or they're going to run a draw and kick it. Let that defense play football. Let's see. That's the call holding against the Montreal Concord. So they are now second and 12. Complete 
to Wilson. Wilson dropped more to the 15-yard line. Mel Jenkins there to make the tackle for the Stampeders. He had to get out to about the 19 and a half yard line in order for Montreal to pick up the first down, but he's well short of that. Jenkins might have made the first hit, but there were six red jerseys that were on Wilson before he finally hit the ground. That's good defense. You get around that football and make things happen. And right now, Calgary needs a break. And if that defense can do it, that'll be great. Right now, they should get good field position to start this next series. Jerry McGrath will get this punt away from his old goal line. Taken by Ricky Hall at midfield. Hall still on his feet. It's down to the Montreal 43-yard line where the Calgary Stampeders will scrimmage first and 10, trailing 14-0. You're not alone. Just about everybody's confused about computers. And where do you go for help? I know where. Where? There's a store where you can choose from the top computers. Where? One where you can get service and support. One where the staff really wants to help. Where? The one that's helped more kinds of people buy more kinds of computers than any other store in the world. Where? Here. Welcome to Computerland. Computerland is only one. Carlsberg like, all right. People here say it's one good beer. Carlsberg light, all right. Cold as ice, it's one real good beer. Crack a cold one and you'll see why it's got that great light taste for me. Carlsberg light, all right. Raise a cheer for good beer. Just a reminder, tomorrow night, the season premiere of The Beachcombers. We invite you to join Bruno Gerussi and friends for their 13th season here on CBC. The Beachcombers, tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern. Five twenty-eight remaining to play in the third quarter. Montreal in front of the Calgary Stampeders, 4 nothing. but the Stamps have the ball and scrimmaging first and 10. The give to Lewis Walker, Rocky in there to make the stop. And Ronnie, I think if the Stamps are going to get back into this ball game, they've got to do it now. Yeah, they they can't just keep going like this. They're just not getting anything coming out of that offense right now. And uh, I've been a little surprised. I haven't seen Bernard Coyle down there throwing the football yet, but Baver's having some problems. This Montreal defense is tough, and they're not giving him anything. They've taken his favorite pass away from him, and now he's in trouble. Second and ten, Stampeders. That's intercepted. That could go for a touchdown. Harry Skipper, Babbers in pursuit. Skipper at the five, end zone, touchdown, Montreal. I'll tell you this, there's a flag on the play, but I think it's gonna be against Calgary, and you could see that one coming. It was just as plain as anything. Babbers threw it late, and Skipper gambled, and he's in perfect position. Watch this, this is what is a defensive back loves. What's the position that he's in? He's in better position than the receiver, and now it's a race. The skipper's got the good speed. Vavra can't catch him. It was a penalty was against Calgary, so this touchdown's going to stand for Harry Skipper. What a cornerback. A 68-yard interception touchdown for Harry Skipper, and that is the ninth time this season that that has happened against the Calgary Stampeders. That's amazing. Prado was telling us that before the game. The skipper, again, you see him going into the end zone. They've had 24 passes intercepted. That is the ninth one that's been returned for a touchdown. Now, that tells you one thing. Their quarterbacks love to throw in the flat. Don Sweets. Convert is good. And now Bernard Corral is throwing the football, but it's going to be a 21-0 lead for the Concord. And I'll tell you, 21 points against the Concord is hard to get. Second time Meraki's been down on the, on the extra point. He's having a little bit of trouble moving around. He's a big man. They can't afford to lose him. He came back uh, the first time he was hurt. In fact, he was only off for about uh, two plays before he came back into the ball game. There's Bernard Quarles. They got to get him in the ball game now. They can't wait any longer. They have not moved the football offensively. And a lot of you can't always say that the offense is no good because I'll tell you that that Montreal defense is tough. 
Nick Araki being tended to by the Montreal training staff would appear to be uh, some sort of uh, knee injury. Boy, what a year he's having for the Montreal Concord. Well, it's amazing when you get a guy that big with that much speed. Every team double teams Nick Araki because one man cannot handle him. And yet, when he gets that ball in the open field, they can't catch him either. I think he's going to get through this one, too. He's limping a little bit. I don't think there's anything structurally wrong as far as that knee goes. He might have a Charlie Bush or something, but he's okay. Boy, Harry, I just can't get over that play Harry Skipper made. He said, here comes an out, and this is going to be six for the white jersey Concord, and away he went. That was his second interception of the game for Harry Skipper. He had five coming into the game, so his season total now setting at seven. Well, you know that Carlin will keep game stars, Steve. You're going to have to pick him, but Harry Skipper's going to have to be right in the running. He certainly can't be ignored at this stage in the game. Concord kicking off. 441 remaining to play in the third quarter. 21 nothing Montreal. Harper gets out across the 30 yard line for the Stampeders. Jack Tony in there to make the stop. Wonder if Coral is asking if he wants him to tie it or win it. What do you want me to do, coach? <laughs> Just give me a chance to show that I can do something for this football team, I suppose, is basically what he's saying. <laughs> well, they have to take somebody out now because, you know, the two quarterbacks are usually able to move in freely into a ball game without somebody coming out. But in Calgary's case, they have Danny Barrett on the roster as a backup receiver who is also a quarterback. So Bernard, when he goes in, somebody has some imports going to be out for the rest of the game. We'll have to find out who it is. 6'2", 200 pounds, Bernard Quarles, University of Hawaii. He can throw the ball. And he can run. He's got a very, very strong arm, and he's got great athletic skills. Well, we've just been told Danny Barrett will leave, and so he's finished for the evening. He can put a jacket on and relax. First and ten. First play for Bernard Quarles in this ball game for the Stampeders. As Ronnie said, he can run, and that's exactly what he does the first time he gets the ball, but he also fumbles. And the first indication is that the Montreal Concord have recovered. Paul Martin was the first to hit him, assisted by Sandy Armstrong. We'll see if Mark run. He has no one open downfield, but we said he's a good athlete and can run, but he forgot one thing. Put that ball away, and when you get hit from the back like that, the ball has to come loose. Sure enough, Armstrong's there. Concord ball. Especially the way this uh, Montreal defense has been hitting. Yeah, watch right here. See, it's been out too far in the open. Come down across that arm, the ball has to come out of there, and it does. Now Montreal can just about put it away. It's 21 nothing lead. They can get this one in the end zone. A little razzle dazzle. Turner Gill going long, and it's picked off. Mel Jenkins coming up with the interception for the Calgary Stampeders. Well, for a rookie, he stepped in and done a good job. We talked about him earlier today. Steve, Mel Jenkins and that rookie out of Cincinnati. You watch, he hands to Wilson. Now, Wilson will stop, turn around, throw it to Turner Gill. Now, he's just going to throw it as far as he can and hope that their man comes down with it. A great position by Jenkins. Turns it over, so Calgary gets the break. They get the break. Todd Brown wasn't able to get open. One more look at it. A little handoff. All right, I'll give it back and block for you. You throw it. Great position. Not thrown far enough now. We'll see what Coyles can do now. First and 10, Stampeders from their own 25-yard line. That was a wounded duck, but the reception was made by number 20, Rick Massey. Massey came back and made that play. That ball, as you say, we're going to take a look at it and just see what happens. And we got a little bit of pressure, but not before he threw it. The ball's not real good, and Massey makes the diving catch. It doesn't matter. It's the first down. We're going to see him get hit here as he throws it. Ken Shanconi gets in there to hit him. He's a big, strong guy. He didn't knock him off his feet. First down, Stampeders. And that time, he was looking for somebody up the middle. 
He was getting great pressure from Rocky. Well, you know, when you get the rush on the first down, get the rush off of you got to throw some screen passes or run some draws. He elected for the screen. It wasn't there. He just threw it away. He's lucky he didn't get called for grounding the football. He's down there looking for his receiver. Never did see who he was throwing to. Put the six defensive back in. They're going to take out one of their football players, number 72. Take out Martin and put another linebacker in. Boy, a three-man rush. Second and ten, Stan Peters from North 37. This time, Quarles will keep it, and he's brought down from behind. Steve Rocky once again getting in there. Steve Rocky's played a good football game again. He's in on every play. How about Rocky is uh, one of the game stars? Well, he's got to be considered. There's no doubt about it. That Montreal defense, the way they're playing, you can pick just about anybody. Concord coming off a big win over the BC Lions, followed that up with a tie against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and are continuing their fine play against the Calgary Stampeders. Well, as Nick Araki said, Steve, they're getting it going at the right time. You know, that offense takes time when you got rookies in there that they have and with a rookie quarterback, but I'll tell you one thing, that defense is getting the job done for them. The tag, funny. Again, he booms one, driving the Concord receiver, Preston Young, back to his own 10. But now Young looking for some running room on the outside. One man to beat, two red shirts in pursuit, and he's brought down just outside the Stampeder 50-yard line. Boy, that's a great run, and there's no flags this time, so Preston will be pretty happy. Preston Young, one Preston, he starts to his left. He can't get outside right away, but he cuts back, and now he gets back outside behind that wall. And now he turns it on. He lets Bill Jones get in front of him, try to get some help from him, but he gets run down from the back. But boy, they're in field position again. Boy, that's great. You know, special teams, they can get to that field position with one play. 19.6 average isn't bad in any, any league at any time. Not too shabby at all. A 57-yard punt, a 48-yard return, giving the Concords first and 10. <laughs> Wilson on a carry. Picks up a couple of yards. Second down. Plays coming in. Turner was over talking to Galat there. Get a little help. Joe Galat says that Turner Gill calls most of his own plays, and he's been happy with the kind of game that he's been calling uh, for the country so far this season. Gill complete to Nick Araki. Moyer was covering on the play and made the tackle, and uh, it looked like Araki took another shot on that knee. Well, he showed no effects of limping, though, when he was running downfield. Turner Gill sprints to his left. He got that big target right across the middle, puts it right on there, and then Daryl Moyer has to come up to make the tackle. So keep the drive alive. Watch Araki. He breaks to the inside. Bang, that ball's going to hit him. Here comes number four to make the tackle. Wilson, and Wilson gets down to the 30-yard line. Walter Ballard there to make the tackle for the Stampeders. That's a great change of direction. He started to go one way, planted that foot, and bang, right back through the hole the other way, brings up three yards. Montreal in front by 21 to a nothing score. And they're going to allow the clock to run down before they get this play off. This will be the last play of the third quarter. brought down just outside the 30-yard line. And there goes the gun to end the third quarter here at McMahon Stadium, and it's still Montreal in front. The margin, 21-0. There's only one left. There's no second best for you in the game you play or the beer you chew. That's why you just say no before that great taste in beer. Oh, 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 yeah. You just say no.
children don't run out of energy. But countries can. At Petro-Canada, we haven't forgotten that energy shortages do happen. We haven't forgotten the search for the energy they'll need tomorrow. We haven't forgotten Canada's future. Petro-Canada, putting Canada first. Petro-Canada, putting Canada first. Filler Shave, the shaving machine that challenges the world. Every blade, every electric. In closeness, comfort, speed, and performance. Only Filler Shave holds its charge twice as long as any rechargeable shaver. Only Filler Shave has three rotary action floating heads with a unique patented lift and cut system. Get it, try it, and like it, or get your money back. Filler Shave from Philips. What a beautiful night here for football at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Not so beautiful for the Calgary Stampeders on the field as the Montreal Concord now attempt a field goal. Don Sweet gets it away, and it's good. 38-yard field goal for Don Sweet, and that makes the score 24 to nothing for the Montreal Concord. Well, Don Sweet, from between the 30 to 40-yard line, he was 7 for 8, so that's not a bad percentage. He's now 8 for 9. And I've always thought Don Sweet is as accurate as any kicker I've ever seen. Uh, Mel Jenkins wants to play referee, says it's no good, but <laughs> I think he knows right there that it was good. <laughs> He's a pretty emotional guy. He got pretty emotional in that game against Hamilton. Yeah, a little bit too much. You don't want to lose your composure that much. It's good to get upset once in a while, but he just got a little carried away, and it's just one of those things. First and 10, Stan Peters, they complete one to Harper. Bernard Quarles to the newcomer, Michael Harper. Boy, Harry Skipper was coming up with a beat on him that knocked him down, went right over the top. Well, that's good for Bernard. You need to complete some passes when you go into the game. You gotta hit them. Now, most quarterbacks that I've ever known love to complete the first ball they've thrown, and it just seems to get them started properly, and Bernard went in, and the first play was in, he fumbled, so it wasn't a great start for him. Pickup of eight, second down, and two yards to go. Stamps from their own 43. The gift to Tim Petros. He's one of those unsung heroes in the Calvary backfield. Very seldom if ever gets to carry the ball. Called upon mainly as a blocker. And at his size, he's not the biggest guy that this world has ever seen, Petros. And he has a tough time in there. 5'10 at 180 pounds. And sometimes he's blocking some guys that outweigh him about 60 pounds. That got the Stampeders the first down. They're first and 10 on their own 45. A little action at the line of scrimmage. Flags go down, and so does Bernard Quarles. You see that number 71, Steve Rocky, there again, along with Glenn Weir. That's going to be an illegal procedure penalty because the Calgary Stampeders were jumping around, and I think the quarterback was uh, going to be called. You're right on. That's exactly what happened. Second and 16 now for the Calgary Stampeders from their own 40-yard line. Montreal having declined the penalty. 13-03 remaining to play in the game. Quarrel, lots of room to run. And he slides into midfield. Glenn Weir. He also made a big mistake, Steve. He's going to come up about two yards short of the first down. That's the time, you know, you, you've got to be aware on the field of where that first and 10 marker is, and you've got to go get it sometimes. And Bernard just failed to do that. He went into that slide a little early. You see Steve right on the sideline giving some hand signals. He's calling the play. They're going to go after this with a 24-0 lead. They have to go after it. They're three yards short on third down. Look like, more like Tim Raines there. It's complete to Levin Seller, and he has the first down. He gets into Concord territory, right down at the 45-yard line. Henry Skipper there to make the stop. That was a gain of 12 yards. It's a big 12-yard pickup it is for Calgary. Just a little swing, very safe pass to throw. One receiver up the field, swing Levin Seller out of the sideline. Only needed three yards. He hit it, got a couple more, keeps the drive alive. They've got to get into the end zone on this drive if they're going to get back in the game.
complete. Levin Seller almost had his head taken off there. He had the ball, but he was hit at the moment of reception. Well, I'll tell you, you talk about playing with a little bit of enthusiasm. They said in that zone defense, Quarles threw that ball out of it, and Harry Skipper just leveled him when that ball arrived. Watch the hit 26 puts on him. The ball's there. Bang. Down he goes. Oh. That'll, that'll get your head spinning a little bit. Second and ten. Stampeders. Quarles pumps once. Fires through the middle again for Levenseller. And again, Levenseller had control momentarily, but couldn't hang on. Yeah, when things aren't going your way, you don't make those catches. You've got to come up with it. If you think back early, well, let's watch this one first. Levin Seller's behind the linebackers, gets both hands on it, drops the football. Think back early in the football game with McTagg going down the sidelines, dropped one right in his hands. Then he dropped another slam. You know, and it, they just haven't been able to put it together tonight. J.T. Hay will attempt a field goal, and it will come from the 52-yard line. You're down 24 to nothing. Do you fake it? Nope. Steve Rocky almost got it, too. He was through there in a hurry. That was wide, and the Montreal Concord, it looks as though they will concede this one. Bill Jones finally goes out of bounds. So, Calgary Stampeders still in a hole. They trail by 23, 24 to 1. I found that railroading to me is more like a disease. I got it when I was young, and I still have it. When it gets down to nitty gritty, the railroaders stick very, very close together. They're a good breed of cats. I work the CP railway line. You become a number with a large corporation. With CP Rail, they've never forgotten my name, and I think it's the finest company in Canada to work for. CP Rail. CP Rail, helping Canada move forward. They've given you the advantage and only moments to make it count. There's no second best for you in the game you play or the beer you choose. That's why you just say your oh, beer for that great taste in beer. Oh, beer, oh, beer, oh, yeah. You just say oh, beer. The Calvary Stampeders get their first point of the ball game, but they still trail by 23. The Montreal Concord will scrimmage first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. Well, you know what's funny? This year, the Calgary Stampeders are averaging exactly 21 points per game. Uh, that's not going to win for you. Right now, you have to be over 24 to be in the ball game most times because the points are going on that board. There was a time when 21 would win. Gill to Lyman. Lyman gets out across the 50-yard line and throws the ball down in disgust, tripped up by Richie Hall. He probably thought he should have had more yards. Tell you what, Wayne Wilson gets most of the plaudits, I guess, from the people around the league, but that Lyman's not a bad running back either. Three rookies back there, and they're getting the job done, getting better every game. Montreal's going to be tough. And you know, he gives them a balanced running attack. If you've only got one back in that backfield that can do the running for you, pretty easy to shut down. But because he runs so well, it gives him a bit of a balance. Sure does. They take Wilson like right here. He's out of there as a pass receiver. Lyman again. They needed three yards for the first down, but they ran into the front wall of the Calgary Stampeders. And that'll bring on the Montreal punting unit with 9.52 to play in the ball game. Montreal in front, 24 to 1. Not a bad call. Second down and four. Run the football. They've been averaging five yards every time they've run tonight. They just didn't get it. The Calgary Stampede has got a pretty good defense. They're third in the CFL. They're pretty good defensively. Their problem has been offensively, offense all year, and it is so again tonight. Jerry McGrath will get this away from his own 45-yard line. One of his better punts of the night. Richie Hall backing up to his six-yard line. Make that Mel Jenkins. And Jenkins gets out across the... 20-yard line where the Calgary Stampeders will take the ball first and 10. They trail by 23 points. Mm -hmm. 
Can you imagine four new millionaires last month alone? Uh -huh. Chances are there'll be four more millionaires after this month's draw. Uh -huh. It's that super lotto that's doing it, you know. Anyone can win. All they need is a ticket, and they get four... four chances of winning a million dollars. Are you listening? Uh -huh. They'll be everywhere, in the street, maybe even in here. Super Lotto gives you four chances to win a million dollars every month. Are you in? <coughs> Some people have to fight rust a little harder than most of us. And that's why Tremclad isn't just Canada's number one selling rust paint. It's also why so many Canadian industrial users choose Tremclad for fighting rust. And if they trust Tremclad under conditions like these, shouldn't you trust Tremclad too? Trust Tremclad on metal. For Grey Cup 84, the spirits in Edmonton be there. Looking forward to Grey Cup in Edmonton. Let's hope that the weather tonight is duplicated in Edmonton. What do you think? We may be asking a lot, but I'll tell you one thing. I was talking to Joe Galat today, and they feel they've got a legitimate shot at being at that Grey Cup. He said that's what they're shooting for. They feel they're improving all the time, and they're looking forward to it. I know we are. First and ten, Stampeders. Twelve. And he got back in the pocket, looked up, and he saw about three white jerseys bearing down on him. Glenn Weir leading the charge. Fuzzy got in there. It's good to see him playing. The guy has been a good football player for that Montreal club over the years, and when he gets in there, he gives them that veteran leadership, and that bunch of rookies, they're doing a great job. A loss of nine on the play, second and 19 now for the Stamps from their own 12-yard line. Quarles in a hole. Oh, and that's picked off. Harry Skipper with his third interception of the game. He already has one TD on the night. Got that one back to the 20-yard line, so the Montreal Concord will have excellent field position and a chance to increase that 23-point margin. I think they're trying to make your job easy at picking these stars, these Carlino Key stars. Coral scrambles around, and Montreal, once again, in that zone, Skipper's just hanging around with nothing to do, just steps in front and gets it. He does a wise thing right here. He takes a look and hits the deck. And when someone's holding you up, they're going to level you. Take another look at Bernard Quarrel. Scrambles a little bit, stops, throws it. And Harry Skipper's got his second of the night, and Montreal's in great position. The give is to Wilson. And Wilson gets a yard, two maybe. Uh-oh. It's, it's never a good sign when the fans leave early and you're the home team. You know things aren't going your way. Early in the third quarter, they started chanting, boring, boring. Not at all pleased with the way the Calgary Stampeders have performed this season. Certainly not the way they perform against the Concord tonight. 24 to 1, Montreal lead. Second and eight for the Concord. And that time, they came up with a strong defensive effort. Four red shirts. Getting well, into the Don, Montreal back in. Don Sweet's going to get another shot. This time be about 31 yards, 32. John Lowry, I believe, holding a meeting with the offensive line, trying to decide what he's going to do about that Montreal rush because they are getting the foil that's forcing him to move around, not allowing him to stand in there and throw it. Don Sweet will attempt a field goal. Spot the ball. The 28-yard line, it's up, and it's good. So Don Sweet puts the Montreal Concord in front of the Calgary Stampeders, 27-1 with 7.14 to play in the game. Did I know everything when I bought my computer? No. Only one. But I knew one thing, to go to the right place for support, service, 
this election and a group of professionals who really wanted to, to help. Exactly. They've built more kinds of people, buy more kinds of computers than any other store in the world. Terrific. When can we go there? Right now. Welcome to Computerland. May I help you? Sunday, September 30th. Be there. The Miller High Life Toronto Marathon. The best yet. Over 5,000 runners competing for over $150,000 in sponsorship awards and prizes. World-class athletes. A new, faster track through residential streets and scenic parkways. Sunday, September 30th. The Miller High Life Toronto Marathon. Be there. And just a reminder, two games tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern. Could it be a Grey Cup preview from Toronto? That's followed by the Battle of the Rough Riders from Taylor Field. Please check local listings for the game and time in your area tomorrow. Four field goals from Don Sweet. A uh, touchdown from Harry Skipper. And a touchdown for Nick Araki. That's the scoring story for the Montreal Concord. They lead 27-1, but Calgary had the ball first and 10. Lewis Walker gets out to the 45-yard line. John Porter there to make the stop for Montreal. Well, you know, they said when we were talking to the coaches, they wanted to get the ball in the hands of number six a lot tonight. He hasn't had it, and as a result, that offense hasn't moved very well. They spot the ball just shy of the 45-yard line, so it'll be second and one for the Stampeders. Walker, 11 carries for 48 yards. This time, Bernard Quarles keeps it himself and should have the first down with a couple of yards to spare. Games remaining for the Calgary Stampeders. They've got to play Winnipeg, Toronto, and BC. Montreal Concord have four games remaining. They have to play Saskatchewan, Edmonton, Toronto, and Ottawa. Calgary fighting for that playoff position. They, they couldn't have picked three toughest teams to finish the season with. I'm surprised at that stat. Montreal 16 first downs, Calgary 12. That time, the pass intended for number 21, Michael Evanseller, was high, goes incomplete. Well, they're just trying to hit Levenseller again in that area behind the linebacker in front of the secondary, and the last time he got his hands on it, this time he too high. Harry Skipper has been the defensive player of the week, I believe, the last two weeks with three interceptions and a touchdown and a couple of good hits tonight. He he may be taking another shot. He is having an outstanding season. Boy, sure is. Quarrel. Complete to Levenseller. Levenseller went down, couldn't get up. And try to pick up some more yardage. Well, they don't have a choice there, Steve. They've got to go after third down and five. They've got to, got to go after the first down. Yeah, you're down by 26 points, 27 to 1 with 5 minutes and 21 seconds remaining to play. The clock is running. Yep, there's no question. You've got to go for it. Sent the play in with Kaminsky. He goes in at fullback, replaces Petros. Sends the play in from the bench. Four receivers over here. Look for the little quick one for five yards. Uh-oh. That's oh. complete. Massey still on his feet. And finally knocked. Out of bounds at about the nine-yard line by Preston Young. Well, that's the biggest play in the world right here. Yeah, that just worked well for them. Massey just goes down the field. Massey's going to come down the field and into this area. Number 18, Vince Bazon, comes in for the interception. He jumps, but it's over his head. And when it's over his head, I thought for sure Bazon was going to intercept it. Watch Massey turn to the inside. Now watch number 18 come underneath it. And the ball's thrown too high, and that's what happened. Matthew kept his eye on the ball, and now it's just a race. He does a good job, gets it down in there, and maybe Calgary can get it in the end zone. Good job, kept his balance. Finally, Preston Young gets it, but boy, I'll tell you, Faison gambled for the interception, didn't get it. Yeah, good effort on the part of Rick Massey after he caught the ball, which is what all coaches look for, the kind of effort you get from your receivers once they've made the catch. Oh, yeah, the, a receiver that catches football is great, but one that can run with it after he catches even better. And uh, Massey showed right there. He may be a rookie, but he knows how to run with the football. Mike McTagg has come into the ball game for the Calgary Stampeders. 
Bill Minsula is number 23, the injured Stampeder. Receiving attention. Well, he was probably downfield blocking for Massey when that ball was thrown, and it is Minsula. University of Toronto graduate. He seems to be okay walking along, and it just got stung for a second. 27 to 1, the Montreal Concord in front of the Calgary Stampeders. It would appear in the Montreal Concords en route to their fifth win of the year in six losses. They'll have 11 points, three behind Toronto, but three in front of Ottawa in the battle for second place in the East. First and ten, Stampeders. One of those fast, excellent balances we talked about before that Montreal club. Complete to Lewis Walker. Walker gets down just outside the five-yard line on the Montreal Concord. John Pointer there to make the stop. Just a little swing pass to Walker, and Aaron Hill just come up. And again, one-on-one -on -one in open field, the back should beat him. And Lewis Walker being a good back that he is, he beat Aaron Hill and gets it down into the five-yard line. Barato wants this ball in the end zone now. If he's got any chance to win the football game, he's got to score quick. He can't afford these long drives and marches now. He's got to score. Second and two. Ball at the six-yard line. Quarrel. He's got some running room. Flag goes down as Quarrel goes into the end zone. But a flag went down at the ten-yard line and one at the two-yard line. I think we're going to get a holding, and I think we're going to get a clip on number nine, McTagg, on the goal line. That one flag that come out late, as Quarles is going to run the ball in for the touchdown, he swung it, it was outside, and I think that's where it happened. Awaiting the call from John Ireland, the referee. It does indeed go against the Calgary Stampeders. And once again, penalties late in the game have hurt them, Ron. Well, penalties hurt you at the best of time. Calgary number 34, second down repeat. Right. Kaminsky got caught for holding. And you said those penalties will kill drives on you. And boy, when you're trying to get in a ball game, it's just about the worst thing that can happen. And then Kaminsky has to go over and stand beside the coach. How's that? <laughs> Punishment. Second and 12, the ball at the 15-yard line. Quarles takes the throw, then unloads, and it's complete down at the two-yard line. Harper coming up with the reception. Gets him a first down. The holding must have taken place afterwards, and so this time, see Quarles gets out of trouble. You see the strong arm, he threw it off balance. But Harper is down there on his knees. The ball's thrown low. It's a good place to throw it. If he doesn't get it, nobody gets it. And you say, Coral's got that strong arm. He threw that off balance and still got it in there. First and goal to go for the Stampeders from the two-yard line. 3.05 remaining to play. A little movement at the line there. Petros goes in for the touchdown for Calgary. It's going to uh, come a feeling they're going to call that one back. Mark Nelson come in on the wing back, and I mean, he had to be two yards offside. He just took off. It was way offside. It wasn't even close. They're arguing. They think it's inside, but no, it's the outside. Mark Nelson is gone, number 82. So with 3.01 remaining to play in the game, it's still Montreal very much in command. 27-1 over the Stampeders. Petro-Canada's search for new energy brings out the best in Canada. This seismic exploration ship, the Bernier, was built in Quebec, with steel made in Ontario, marine equipment from Atlantic Canada, electronic systems from Alberta, thruster engines from British Columbia, captain crew and scientists employed on board from all over Canada. Because from frontier exploration to the service station around the corner, Petro-Canada puts Canada first. Our thinking here has changed from let's get a lot out to let's get the best out. At Ford, we've made quality job one. We're producing the highest quality of all major North American manufacturers. 
I've owned a lot of cars in my lifetime, but this tempo has to have the best quality and workmanship of any car that I've ever seen. Driving is believing. Ford, I'm a believer. Montreal Concord with a commanding 27-1 lead over the Calgary Stampeders here at McMahon Stadium. We're in the dying moments of this contest, and Calgary, dearly loved, put a touchdown on the board. First and seven. Turner Gill being chased, gets the pass away, but he throws it out of bounds, getting great pressure from Pointer. Had a little choice but to unload, and uh, really there was no receiver within a couple of yards. Well, he sure didn't. Pointer, I didn't realize Pointer had that much speed for an inside linebacker, but he was staying right with Menard. Ooh, that's a pretty good move right there by Harper. But the only problem is, Quarles was rolling to the other side of the field, so there's no way he's going to see Harper <laughs> over here. And he was running for his life. Okay, the Calgary Stampeders will try once again. Get some points on the board. This time they do, and maybe Harper show Paul something on that last move because that's a touchdown for the Calgary Stampeders. Michael well, Harper playing his first game. That's the same thing he did for a quick inside move. Quarles just throws it in there. He gets inside a skipper. Nobody underneath to help, and there it is. Easy touchdown. Well, they finally got on the board. It took them a long time, about 58 minutes to do so, but here we'll see him coming inside. Quarles puts it right where it has to be, and they're on the board finally. Well, head coach Steve Barato said that Harper had what he thought were all the necessary ingredients to become a good receiver in the CFL. Well, he's got that thing you can't teach, and that's speed. You see Bernard Quarles laying it in there again. Just got in between, going for two, going to sprint out. And was he in the end zone when he made the catch? The first indication is no. I think the referee made a great call right there because Levenfeller himself was in the end zone when the ball was thrown, but when he reached across the goal line to catch it, the ball never crossed the goal line. The referee's right there to call it. Well, there goes that horse that we run, run to death many times up here. He loved us. Stayed warm on those cold nights. <laughs> Hasn't had too much exercise in tonight's game. Yeah, we'll get a chance to see it. The ball's going to come right at you. Watch Levenfeller reach back out into the field of play to make this catch. And he lands outside, and without his feet on the ground, the referee's right there to make the call. They've got to short kick this whether they want to or not. I mean, they've got to try to get that ball back. Well, Steve Barato told us before the game that uh, if Calgary scored a touchdown, that's exactly what they would do, but I don't think he had uh, this scenario in mind when he said that. They trailed 27 to 7. I think he was hoping to be up 7 nothing with a chance to make it 14, but 27-7, I think you can just about bet the house on this. And Montreal's not fooled. They got everybody in there to do whatever they have to do. And the reason Steve Barato said that he would short kick was because he felt there was a big hole that they could kick into. But that hole has been closed up considerably. Well, JT Hay well, does kick. kick short, and Iraqi just tips it out of bounds. Play a little volleyball, throw it out of bounds. That's all you have to do. Once you touch it, you control it. He did it. Of course, I'll tell you one thing. When you're 6-6, six, six, it definitely gives you an advantage. Look, Look at this. him go up. Well, he gets up there, doesn't he, and says, see you later. What I like is those three white jerseys in front of Iraqi ready to block anybody coming close to allow him to make the play. Concord with two minutes and 37 seconds remaining to play in the game. They lead 27 to 7. First and 10. Danny Ferdinand, the ball carrier for the Concord, gets down just shy of the 50 yard line of the Calgary Stampeders. You know, that's amazing that Danny Ferdinand is a one heck of a football player, and yet he has to be the backup back on this Montreal club, so you know they've got some talent. Six foot, 212 pounds. Gallant was saying that uh, he would like to get Ferdinand into the starting lineup, but uh, you're certainly not going to knock Wilson out of there. No, and Lyman and Wilson, they've got a pretty good team. As you said, they, take, they balance it off a lot. Ferdinand again. Close to the first down. 
He may be about a yard short. We'll see what happens. Calling for the chains. Measure this one. Montreal are doing what they've done uh, so well all night long, and that is uh, simply run down the clock. Possession. Turner Gill's done a good job of mixing everything up tonight. He's passed when he's had to, but boy, that running game has done the job for him, and the possession, about a foot, foot short. I think they'll go after this. I think Joe Glad has enough confidence in him now that he, they'll get this first down. Joe Gallant has to be pleased with the performance of his team tonight. They have done everything that uh, he talked about before the game in terms of a balanced offense and another strong defensive performance. The only thing, Turner didn't get a 65-yard rush, but he got some of it. He did run with the football. I don't know whether he's going to get the first down or not. Depends where they mark it. His initial thrust forward was turned back by the Calgary Stampeders. Well, they did get beat to the charge. That middle of that Calgary Stampeder line really stopped him cold, but then he spun off. And I think he fell forward. We're going to look at it. Eagle Eye spotter Mo Simovich says he made it by an inch. Well, we're in trouble if Simovich said so. Well, the Calgary Stampeders are saying no. The Concord is saying yes. But in the final analysis, it is no. The man in the white shirt with the stripes will make the decision. And he has made the decision in favor of the Calgary Stampeders. Well, you know, with, with a 27-7 lead and less than a yard to go, it's good. What? What's from the, the chart? Boy, he gets stopped cold. Now he tries to spin off and get forward. And you lose that forward momentum, and he came up short. He did not make it. But, you know, they need to get that down. With a 27-7 lead, they should be able to hang in there and win this. But in those playoffs, that's valuable experience. Turner Gill knows now what you have to do to get that quarterback sneak. First and 10, Stan Peters. Quarrel. Complete. 11 seller. Hit by Aaron Hill. That pattern's the one that they love to throw, and Coach Glatt said today, he said, we'll give it to him all night. We'll give him four yards and a headache, and that's exactly what he did. He got the four yards, and Aaron Hill put a hit on him. Second and five now for the Stampeders. Again, Quarles putting it up, and again is complete to Levin Seller, this time on the left side. Get on the line. You, you know, there's no sense getting in a huddle now. You know you're going to throw the football. Get lined up. Let's go. Minute and 37 seconds remaining to play. Montreal in front, 27 to 7. Calgary on the move. But they've got to move quicker than this. Quarrel complete. And it looks as if Montreal is willing to give them that short pass. Third pass in a row, Levin Seller. That was a good move by Levin Seller. He went down and started to the outside where he'd been going all night, and Aaron Hill took off, and he stopped. Montreal not too concerned at giving them uh, 10, 15 yarders. Yeah, the next touchdown's not going to beat him. Comes it over the middle this time to Lewis Walker. Walker gets down inside the 25-yard line. Gary Skipper coming up with a tackle for Montreal. One of the many things he's done well defensively for the Concord in this game. Three interceptions, one for a touchdown. A couple of great hits. Got an injury to Paul Gray. Looks like a little bit of pain. Stopping Lewis Walker. Right? Walker always falls forward. There's the birthday boy, Steve Barato, celebrating his 41st tonight. Not the way he would have liked to with a victory. On the other side of the field, a very contented, a very satisfied Joe Gallant. It's a great, outstanding performance for the Concord. If you take a look at Paul Gray now coming into the screen right here. When he falls right there, that left arm goes down, and he gets fallen over. And they're working on that left arm of his. Since coming into the ball game, Quarles has completed 13 passes, attempted 19 for 156 yards, one interception. Uh, 
I think he'll be all right. He's going to have. Uh, he's not going to have to play any more tonight. He's going to have a little bit of time for that next one. He'll be ready. He's played well for that football team since he's joined them. Going to be a nice plane ride back to Montreal for the Concord. Uh, not a very happy dressing room for Wilburn and the Calgary Stampeders. And yeah, we're down to 115 and the clock's running. Now you would think to me, with as much time as that injury took, that it had to play call. They've wasted about 12 seconds coming out of the huddle. First and 10, Stampeders, 103 remaining to play. They're down 27 to 7. Quarles to Lewis Walker, and Walker stopped by Vince Faison as he tried to get across the 25 yard line. <laughs> I don't know if that's Leo or not. I thought Leo was in Toronto. Well, he and Don Whitman are there to do that uh, Winnipeg game tomorrow. Uh, maybe it's a stand-in. Better watch out. Quarles over the middle. Lewis Walker. And Walker stopped before he could get to the 15-yard line. Well, Vince Faison was coming on a safety blitz, and he just got rid of it in time because Faison got there and put the hit on him. Stampeders had to get down to the 12 to pick up the first down. They are now third and three. 43 seconds remaining to play in the game. We remind you, immediately following the game, we will have the Carling O'Keefe Sports Game Stars. Bernard Quarles complete to Massey, and Massey steps out of bounds at the five, stopping the clock. That's good for the first down, so the Calgary Stampeders will be first and goal from just outside. They got the six-yard line. Two steps downfield, turn to the outside, catch the ball, run out of bounds. Good move, stops the clock with 36 seconds left. And another injured Montreal Concord on the play. He's tired, he's just gonna rest there for a minute. He's gonna need a little bit of help to get up. Paul Mark, number 72, the injured Concord. It has not been what you call a terribly physical game, but there have been some good hits. Well, Montreal defense, they've had a lot of good hits tonight. Vince Faison's put a couple hits on. Skipper's put a couple of good ones. Aaron Hill's put some on them. And Steve Rocky's been all over the place. It's been a good night for that Montreal defense. And that's the kind of defense that is going to, I think, get Montreal a fair ways in the Eastern Conference and will perform well for them come playoff time. Boy, I, I agree 100%. This club uh, is getting better every week, and I remember Joe Glatt telling us early in the year it was going to take him a while offensively, playing a lot of young guys, but the defense has come together as a unit, and they've got a lot of pride right now. They feel they can stop anybody, and you know that mental part of the game, just thinking you can do it is half the battle. Rufus Crawford of the Hamilton Ticats calls the Montreal Concord the best team in the CFL. Well, he runs against them. He probably would know. First and goal to go from the six. Quarles, under pressure, gets it away, dumps it over the middle. Lewis Walker was in the area, Rocky had Quarles by the ankle. But I think Quarles just threw that one away. They were all after him. There was three white jerseys chasing him. Doug Scott was one of them. Well, 27 seconds left. I know they'd sure like to get another one into that end zone. That offense has sputtered at the worst times for them tonight. Comes a safety blitz. Second and goal, touchdown! Calgary Stampeders, number 21, Levenzella, pulling that one in. Finally, the Calgary Stampeders ending this drive with a TD. Well, there goes the horse again. Bernard Quarles rolls out to his right. Preston Young's coming on a safety blitz, but he doesn't get there. And you're going to see the catch made, and you're going to see the Montreal defenders start complaining. They wanted a pick call. <laughs> Too bad. The touchdown counts. 62 yards, nine plays. Capped by a six-yard pass from Quarles to Levin Seller. As Ralph the Dog looks on, it's not been a very enjoyable night for Ralph either. Oh, he doesn't look very pleased either. 
And again, the Stampeders try for the two points. Quarles under pressure just dumps it over the middle. Looking for Michael Harper, but Porter was in hot pursuit. This play takes lots of practice. You just don't put this in in a minute. Got another injury on the field for 71, Steve Rocky. We talked about this not being too physical a game. Maybe I'll take that back. In the last five minutes, as the Calgary Stampeders horse goes up and down the sidelines, the Montreal Concord have really been paying for this, uh, what should be a victory in terms of uh, injured players. Steve Barato talking to his quarterback and Michael Harper. Joe Galat still the best dressed coach in the CFL. Not much doubt about that, is it? Well, this one doesn't look so good for Rock. He has played an outstanding game for the Montreal Concord. He's in a little bit of pain. Just tell by the way he's moving those hands around. Been working on his left knee. And as we said before, that's the one area of an athlete's body that you uh, hate to see trainers attending to. Well, Bernard Quarles has played well tonight. You know, it's, even though they've lost, he's gone in and he's done a good job. Hopefully that uh, they can get things turned around and start scoring some points. They got, you can't win if you don't score. You know, aren't bad statistics, 17 for 25, 178 yards. That's not bad. You at least put the ball in the end zone. You can move that ball up and down the field all you want, but you've got to get it into the end zone. That's not, you don't like to see that. They're going to take him right off the field over here to the dressing room. In his rookie season, he's been a great find for them. We were talking earlier before the game, there's been a number of outstanding rookies in the CFL this year. It's going to be tough. Oh. Pick uh, rookie of the year. Well, he, Shenley time. He's a good one. Wilson's a good one. Turner Gill's a good one. That's just off Montreal. Who's going to get your vote? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I don't really know. I hadn't even thought about it. There's a lot of them, though. I'll tell you, Edmonton's got a couple. Daryl Hall, Stuart Hill, BC with Darnell Clash. And there's been some players come in the league this year, and it's great. JT Hay will kick it off, and again, it will be short, as you might expect. But this time, the Concord come up with it. Preston Young gets it in Stampeder territory at about the 52-yard line. He kicked that one left-footed. Came through, and he came through with the left foot, just rolled it over there. Tell you when you're on that artificial turf, that ball's going to come up sooner or later. It can roll along for two or three yards or ten yards or so, and then all of a sudden it's going to pop up high, and that's exactly what happens. If the artificial turf is wet, sometimes the ball has a tendency to stay down low and skid along the surface, but when it is dry, you're right. It does have a tendency. It's going to come up sooner, sooner or later. Sooner or later, it's coming up. It has to. It's a crazy game playing on that grass, turf, whatever you want to call it. First and ten, Concord from the Stampeders, 52-yard line. And they're just content to let the clock wind down. 18 seconds remaining to play. It's hard to tell whether Joe Galatz won or lost. Just standing over there, kind of relaxed. Well, he's getting used to it now. Win over BC, tie against Winnipeg, come into Calgary and knock off the Stampeders. Ho hum. It's not a surprise for him anymore, right? <laughs> It's just it's getting to be routine now. We're going to win every week or something. He was pretty animated in the win over the BC Lions, but uh, you're right. He's very cool, calm, and collected. And there goes the gun to end the game. The Montreal Concord have won their fifth game of the season. Picked up their 11th point, defeating the Calgary Stampeders 27 to 13. And Ron, they were full credit for the win. Yeah, they, you have to give them the mark. The defense did the job for them, as, as has done the job for them all year long. The defense has been tough. They got consistent play tonight from the offense. Nothing fancy. They didn't throw the ball all over the field. They ran the ball when they could, threw when they had to, and I thought Turner Gill directed a good game. And Boy, when the offense scores, it's sure that defense gets happy and they play a little harder. I'll tell you, if you've got a balanced attack like the one that Turner Gill ran tonight against Steve Barato and the Calgary Stampeders, you're going to win a lot of ball games. And that's what Steve Barato and the Stampeders have not had all season long. And that is a really good, solid 
offense. They just haven't been able to get one going. No, they made the quarterback change halfway, and it hasn't improved for them. And uh, no consistency with the offense. And when you don't have that, you're not going to win many ball games. Defense can keep getting them, but they can't win it for you all the time. Well, we've got the winning coach of this ball game, Joe Galat, down on the sidelines. Joe, congratulations on another big win. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, I thought it was a tough, hard-fought ball game, and uh, we're happy to be uh, on the winning side. Joe, you had a couple of ball players go down there uh, late in the game. You must be a little bit concerned. Yes, I am. Uh, you know, we've lobbied all year about the chop block, uh, trying to get that taken out of football. I don't think there's any place in football for one player to have a guy stood up and another one to come from the outside and crack back on them. And uh, I don't know what to do about it, but I know it's been a topic of discussion on the Rules Committee for about four years, and it's just a cry and shame if we lose a football player on something that we can prevent and we're going to have to look at it a little bit harder. Joe, let me ask you this. Uh, today you made a statement about still having the aspirations to finish in first place in that Eastern Division. I don't think anybody else would give you any hope of it, but I'll tell you what, your confidence and the way your team's playing, what do you think? Well, uh, you know, the boys want to finish first, and uh, they tell me we can do it. Uh, I think it all depends on uh, how we progress. We've got to get better each week, and uh, that's what we said we were going to do this year. We Knew we would take maybe a step or two backwards to put the young quarterbacks in there and learn, but I think uh, I think we're coming along. And the defense uh, is really keeping us in the ball games. They're doing a great job, and um, who knows how far we can go. Joe, we were talking about your balanced attack tonight. It was very, very impressive. And the touchdown by Nick Araki. Perhaps we can roll that for the viewers at home and get you to talk about it as we take a look at it. Nick Araki's touchdown. Okay, this is, uh, this is a play where uh, Turner throws back. Uh, you see him sprinting out to the uh, right. He sees Nick uh, in single coverage. He comes right back over the top and uh, puts the ball in there. They don't have a chance to recover. The uh, backside halfback tried to come over, but Nick makes a great catch. That was set up by a fine catch by Todd Brown as well. So uh, we were pleased with our passing attack tonight. Joe, you're talking about your offense today that you had to run the football. We said during the telecast that maybe the game wasn't a... Uh, real show for an offense but it was a very consistent offense you ran the ball when you could and threw when you had to you had to be very pleased about their balanced attack well I'm pleased with uh, you know the, I think Turner Gill did a good job of running with the football and when the quarterbacks run with the football you gotta you know you've got to shake the defense up a little bit and that's a fine defense we played against so I think the offense did a good job they, they fronted people up they blocked well uh, Dwayne Wilson had a good night uh, Terry Lyman had a good night so we're pleased with that, and I think the receivers are just doing an excellent job. We saw we saw that particularly when we were talking today at breakfast about your receivers, and you had a lot of praise for Todd Brown.